Okay, hey, hey, Jelly Toast here, back with more Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Um, I ate too many pizza rolls for dinner. I feel kind of gross, but let's do this. It's time for the trial. Oh, wait. You know what I didn't do the last investigation? I didn't do um a deduction. Shoot. Okay, so maybe this trial will be short, too. There's that old familiar feeling again. The crushing pressure of this historic courthouse. Actually, no. It's a little different today. There's an even more menacing tension in the air. There's a menacing tension in the air here today, isn't there? I suppose. Yes, I think so. It can only be the result of the menacing appearance of the defendant. A little more courtesy, if you please. Oh my! I do apologize. However, you're certainly not mistaken that this trial is far from ordinary. What do you mean? I'm not privy to the details, however. I understand that no jury has been selected. No jury? Is this gonna be a, a private trial? But, um, whatchamacallit, what's his face? Strongheart was like, yo, this is gonna become public knowledge and, and the world will, will know about this. What? Okay, whatever. A trial without a jury? Well, well, that's just like the trial of the professor 10 years ago. Closed court. Oh, so then we don't have to do with any of the stupid, um, jury nonsense. Okay, so maybe this will be a shorter trial. Good. Good morning, my dear fellows. Mr. Sholmes. Have you made note of my hair, Mr. Nathodo? An outright victory for science, you must agree. Oh, his hair's back to normal. To be perfectly honest, so much happened yesterday that, well, I completely forgot about your little hair problem. Ha! Huh. What to one man is a little hair problem? Is to another a day of drinking dubious potion after dubious potion. Kirby! Oh my gosh, so many cats! Oh my gosh, you have so many different cat emotes! They all have different hair! What the heck? That reminds me, I need to make um new emotes. Maybe I'll do a drawing stream tomorrow or something. So I can update my emotes. But I hope you had a good weekend, Kirby! Oh my gosh, did I tell you I started playing um Three Houses again? I'm like on chapter 8 or 9 of Black Eagles. <laughs> I'm slowly making progress. Rather protect for Nevada initiative. Oh yeah, I should do that too. Good call, Kirby. I should make my um layout thing for Nirvana Initiative. Smart, smart, smart. Okay, so maybe I will do an art stream tomorrow. Like I wanted to do I wanted to draw today, but I worked too hard at work and so I got tennis elbow and my elbow was killing me. Hey yo, Regal! Oh, whoa, wait, that's not Fennekin. Um Is that the second form? It's not Del Fox, is it? What's the second form? I forget. But hey Regal, I hope you had a good weekend. You wanna draw older Mizuki or the new protag Ryuki? Um Yes, please get me picture so I don't get spoiled. But is Ryuki the new protag? It's not Mizuki? I thought it was Mizuki. Well, who's less annoying? Cause remember I started off my um AI Somnium files with um Iris and then she got on my nerves, so I switched to um What's his face? I switched to the other dude. I've been waiting all day for you, JT. You're annoying. What? Why? You have two protagonists in I- Oh. I'll stick with only one, then. Big news! I has it! What is it? Golden? Also, uh, thanks for joining. I hope you had a good weekend. You play a part of his as Duke and his partner, another part as Musuki and her partner. Oh, interesting. Can't wait. See, I, this is why I need to rush through this game so I can play Nirvana Initiative. I'm glad this game is almost done. Me too! Things are heating up in here. You have no idea how my stomach ails me this morning. Oh dear, how awful for you. My stomach is ailing me right now because I ate too many pizza rolls for dinner. I ate like seven too many pizza rolls. I have all the regrets. I'm afraid you only have yourself to blame, Mr. Oh wait, that's what you know, I'm only afraid you only have yourself to blame, Mr. Sholmes. And good morning to you, Mr. Reaper. I'm delighted to see you looking so full of vim. And are you? I see London's celebrated great detective is as active as ever. Oh, you exaggerate, my dear fellow, compared to my paltry engagement with you trivial cases. The Reaper's overbearing presence is a far greater deterrent to the black roots of crime in our capital. 
And whilst I may not agree with your methods, there is at least one point on which I would readily commend you. What an honor, and that would be. Your eye for a good lawyer, sir. Mr. Sholmes! Uh, this morning at 7 a.m., my sister gave birth to her first child, Sky Luna. <gasps> congratulations, Golden! Oh, that's such great news! Oh, congratulations! I hope your sister and your niece have a speedy recovery and don't stay in the hospital too long. You still need to play Danganbanga <laughs> at the Zero Escape games. Wait, I played all the Zero Escape games. Not on stream, but I've played them in my own time. And yes, I still have to play Dango Bongo. Ugh, so many games to play, so little time. Why can't I just win the lotto so I could become a full-time streamer and just play games all day? <laughs> After all, behind this lawyer, there's a great, very great mind, my own. <laughs> what are you trying to say? I was trying to say that you should be prepared for quite a trial, Mr. Reaper. Sorry to barge in. I thought that was Gregson for a second, and I was like, you're dead! <laughs> Luna's the name of someone from Zero Escape Games? Yeah! She was in, um... The third one. No, the second one. In both. Well, goes my sister and me should be home tomorrow Wednesday. All looked well today when I saw them. Yay! Spoilers? There's no spoilers as long as you know who's in the game. Luna's also Spanish for Moon, which is probably why my sister gave her that name. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's so cute. Uh, Dina! What's that on her arm? It's a morning band, I suppose. Father, shouldn't you be at the symposium? Could have called her soul. <laughs> check your tweets when you can. Yeah, I need to check Twitter again. And if you are for I need- Thank you, Kirby! It's been postponed, so I have some free time. I decided to come along with the police inspector to see our country's up-and-coming student in action. And Discord, thank you, thank you! I should be very interested to see the fruits of your studies over the past year. Well, it's an honor to have you here. Let's hope there are some fruits to see. Oh no, she's mad because I'm defending, um... Uh, what's his face? Van Zeeks. Anyways, how's everyone here been? I didn't know JT had a Discord. Yeah, I have a Discord, but I'm not, like, super active on it. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yes, Gina? Oh, I don't have, like, a Discord channel, though. It's just my own personal Discord. Why'd you agree to this, eh? Why'd you take him on? This... this Reaper bloke. Everyone says it was him, what? What killed the boss? Sorry, Gina, but I just don't believe that. Well, if it weren't him, who was it? I don't know that yet. I don't care who calls him what. The Reaper's just a name. He's just a person at the end of the day. And if it turns out it was him, we'll kill the boss. Then God help him. He didn't do it, though. Fiery eyes, indeed. Like, I really believe Van Zeke didn't kill him. Yes, the culprit deserves every ounce of your loathing. Eh? At least, that may be some solace to the deceased. But then who could have killed him? Maybe it was, um, missing husband, dude. Because who else could it have been? I'm watching the Game Grunts 10 year anniversary video. Yeah, I watched it earlier and I'm just like, wow, it's been 10 years? I feel like it was yesterday, it was 7 years. 3 years passed by so quickly. Please, Odo. Get whoever did this. Call the boss. Oh, Gina. I ain't feeling this useless, but there's nothing I can do. We've gotta find who's done this and make the rush pay. Council to Flint, send the defendant to Rilama. Court will be in session shortly. Make your way into the courtroom at once, please. Alright then, here we go. Here we go again. It's time, Mr. Nadhodo. Lord Van Zeeks. One who lost his treasured brother to a mass murderer. One who lost his treasured father in a foreign court of law. And one who lost the man who helped her escape destitution. All that misfortune, all that pain, on course to collide headlong in this trial. 
It's time to shine a light on the, all these dark events. And whatever truth is revealed, we're going to have to look it straight in the eye. Fast trial, fast trial. Like, I feel like this will be a fast trial because, um... Oh, no gallery either! Okay, yeah, so I feel like this has to be a fast trial because, um... I feel like this case is just like a stepping stone for the final case. The trials will be swift and just. I hope so! In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. We are here to conduct the fair and just trial of the defendant Barak Van Zeeks. Counsels for the defense and prosecution, are you ready to begin? The defense is ready, my lord. Ah! The prosecution is more than ready. Oh, Kazuma-sama! Susato, you gotta say something other than Kazuma-sama every time you see him. It's getting old. I've been wishing to see you in court again for so long, it feels. But I never pictured it happening like this. I never thought I'd be facing you behind the prosecution sponge. So-called Reaper of the Bailey has been a scourge like no other, undermining Her Majesty's justice system. Today, we must uncover the truth behind the scourge. In other words, this trial is going to be a lot more far-reaching than Inspector Gregson's murder. The truth revealed by these proceedings may have unpredictable repercussions to the judiciary. Accordingly, they are to be conducted as a closed trial with no members of the public present, by Her Majesty's direct orders. How that work, my lord? The burden of all arbitration and adjudication falls on my shoulders. Therefore, as you will see, the jurors' bench shall remain vacant today. If no members of the public are present, might I ask who is currently occupying the gallery, my lord? Do you see anyone? They are members of the judiciary, here to witness proceedings and ensure an equitable trial. Members of the judiciary? Oh my, this is a very unusual trial already. There is of course another, unprecedented aspect to these proceedings on which I must elaborate. The counsels for the prosecution and the defense are both aliens of Great Britain. Yeah, Dude, we are- Whoa, there are people in the gallery, there's like shadow people. I believe it takes an outsider to see the truth sometimes. And as I stand here in this courtroom now, I'm quite certain. This is the reason why I had to, I had to come to Britain. Asuma? Very well, let us commence proceedings. Prosecutor Asogi, your opening statement, if you please. Oh, you're so handsome. Certainly, my lord. The incident took place on 1st November at just after 5 o'clock in the afternoon. The location was a building off of flats on Fresno Street on the outskirts of the city. The victim's body was discovered there in an old single-room rental property. Yes, Inspector Tobias Gregson, a name known very well indeed to this court. Not least for his miraculous resolution of one of this country's grimmest cases ten years ago. A professor case. Oh. Hey, Smooth, how you doing? Thanks for joining! I hope you had a good weekend! How sure are you about the time of the incident? Several witnesses on the street outside heard the gunshot, and all have reported at the same time. Yes, that's what Gina told us too. There were a number of witnesses. I have here a plan of the room. The victim was found curled up in one corner. It's believed that he was shot from the front at point black range and died instantly. Hmm, how has the range been determined? There were scorch marks around the entry room. Such marks are caused by the gunpowder used to fire the bullet. But powder hot enough to leave scorch marks is only ejected a few inches beyond the end of the barrel. In other words, it only happens when the target has a point black range. I see, yes. Thank you for the detailed explanation, Counsel. The autopsy report... The murder weapon was found lying beside the victim. But now I'm gonna see the autopsy report. Age 45, time of death, coroner Maria Gory. Ha ha ha, cause it's gory. They didn't say time of death! Was that purposely taken out? Monster Hunter? Oh! Cause of death. Victim was shot in the chest at close range from the front, resulting in instant death. Scorch marks at point of entry. The bullet exited the body from behind. Additional observations. The caliber of the gun used matches that of standard issue firearms for members of the judiciary. 
And have you managed to ascertain the owner of this firearm? No, my lord. Not conclusively. Bravo, Kasuma-sama. Not trying to use the gun as evidence when its provenance can't be proven. Furthermore, my lord, as I've explained, the revolver was fired at extremely close range. The bullet passed through the victim and struck the wall behind him. There's a candelabrum on How do you pronounce that? Candelabrum? Can candelabrum? Candelabrum? Cause like, if it's singular, it's candelabra- candelabra? Candelabrum? Whatever. Mounted on that wall. And the tip of one of the candles in it was found to have been blown off by the projectile. We noticed that too, didn't we? Yes, that's right. Thank you for the thorough report, Counsel. The setting of the crime is clear to me. You'll submit the plan of the crime scene as evidence, please. As you wish, my lord. Crime scene floor plan... Is this Fresno State Room Inspector Gresson's private abode? We don't know! Okay. Nuclear, the S is silent. There's no S in nucle nuclear! What? <laughs> what is happening? No, my lord. The room is rented to a Mr. Hugh Boone. Still don't get the pun for that. But there's precious little furniture inside, and it is generally in a poor state of repair. So what on earth was Gregson even doing there? Presumably he was investigating some other case or other. When a policeman was informed of the gunshot from the witnesses and rushed to the scene, he found only the deceased inspector and the accused standing alongside holding the revolver. The attending officer arrested the accused on the spot. So, the details of the case are clear. In that case, the prosecution would like to call its first witness. A name, please, counsel. Naturally, he accused himself. Lord Van Zeeks? As a prosecutor, he believes in the oath of office he's taken and will be compelled to tell the truth. Well, then there will be nothing to rip apart in his testimony, so... We will let the defender take the witness stand. Family Guy joke. Is Family Guy still going on? Because it's been, like, going for years, I feel like. Not as long as The Simpsons, but it's long. So, witness, state your name and occupation for the court. Barak Van Zeeks, Old Bailey Prosecutor. I presume, Lord Van Zeeks, that you heard Prosecutor Asselby's opening presses. Reeses? I did. It is alleged that you were found at the scene of the crime, and that you were arrested by an arriving police officer. Can you confirm this? Yes, my lord. Unfortunately, yes, Simpsons and South Park are still going to. Simpsons I can understand because it has a history of, like, being good. South Park? I can understand too because its humor is very, like, snappy. And it's always been kind of, like, um... Like, the humor is, like, very... I don't know how to describe it, but, like, South Park has its humor. But then Family Guy, I feel like it started off having a story, and then it just changed into just copying memes. And it's just like, okay, so is there a story, or are you just animating memes to show on television now? I think American Dad is still going on too for some reason. Okay, that I don't understand why it's still going on. Like, sorry, I mean, it's a new, that's another cartoon show. It's more jobs and animation for people, but it's just like, I American Dad. <laughs> I'm sure the court would like to hear you explain some things away. Namely, why you were there in the room on Fresno Street at the time in question, and what exactly took place. I intend to explain away nothing. I will simply tell the truth. I must say, Lord Vanzix, I never imagined this day would come. Or rather, I didn't want to imagine it would come, but since you became known as a Reaper, a part of me has been dreading it. Your formal testimony then, witness. American da Dad died when Bush left office. That was 15 years ago. Has it been 15 years? Oh my gosh, no way. I was investigating Gregson and my inquiries had led me to that address. When I first entered the room that day, it was dark inside and I saw no one. A moment later, I heard the gunshot. I spun around and saw the revolver on the floor. Just as I picked the firearm up to examine it, the door flew open and I heard a man scream. It was only then that the body of Inspector Gregson appeared before me. 
That testimony was the whole truth? It was. So, you heard a shot being fired in a room with no living occupants. And moments later, a corpse somehow appeared before your eyes. Is that it? You're right, you haven't explained away anything. In fact, that would barely qualify as an excuse. Oh, ah, I missed it, ah. I thought you were my mute apprentice. Yet it turns out you have a way with words, Prosecutor Asogi. Hmm, it would appear to be a singular tale indeed. Singular isn't the world. Word, it's laughable. What's gotten into Kazuma? He's not behaving like himself at all. Very well then. Counsel, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, my lord. Okay, has it really been 15 years since Bush left office? Let's see, Obama had eight, and then Trump had four, one, three, four, and then... That's 12, and then... You're right! It's like 14, 15 years. Dang! Wow! Time goes by so quick. Okay, so I know Van Zeeks didn't kill him, but this testimony is very confusing. I gotta press everything. Oops. You were investigating the inspector. What on earth for? I'm not at liberty to say. Because Strongheart told you to! He wanted to frame you for the murder! Uh, sorry? I'd identified a distinct possibility that Gregson was involved in a case I was investigating. Regrettably, though, he was killed before I could secure the proof I needed. It's a cool to understand, then, that on the day in question, you followed the victim to the scene. No, I was privy to his movements in advance. How? I still went to his office into the yard and consulted his diary. That, I feel, is a lie. The address on Fresno Street was noted in the 5pm entry. You illegally entered the man's office. In Japan, that alone would constitute a very serious offense. As it does in Great Britain, I assure you, is that not the case, Lord Van Zeeks? I was aware of the possible consequences. So, in summary, you were investigating the victim. And yet, you refused to tell the court why. I didn't realize British prosecutors enjoyed such freedom to choose what to divulge under oath. Uh, why did I ever think I could defend this man? Because he's innocent! It was dark inside, but there were holes in the windows. Had you ever been to the address before? No, never. I only learned of the place as a result of my investigations into Gregson's activities. There was no light inside when I entered, so it was all Im but impossible to make out anything. But at 5pm, the sun would only have just gone down. It would still have been reasonably light outside. The room has a window, but it was boarded shut. Very little light found its way into the room from the outside, so it was extremely murky inside. I wouldn't have noticed that the victim was already lying on the floor. There was no artificial light in the room, you say? You're quite sure? I'm quite sure that the part of the room where the body was found was very dark. I have a feeling there was a small oil lamp burning on the desk, though I couldn't say for certain. Look, Mr. Narahura. There's a small desk in the room just here. Yes, I remember, and there was an oil lamp on it, as well as the famed fro framed photograph. When I entered the room, I closed the door behind me and started towards the desk to investigate. And what did you find? Nothing. I never actually reached the desk. So, who fired the gun? I have no idea. I didn't see anybody else in the room. But you say it was very dark in there. Yes, that's right. All I can tell you is, I didn't sense another's presence. Aha! Then could it be... that the gunshot actually originated from somewhere outside the room? No, that's out of the question. Oh. Without doubt, the sound emanated from inside the room. I could smell the gunpowder. Ugh, this is going, to, going from bad to worse. And you say that's the point at which you noticed the revolver on the floor? Correct. And I foolishly picked it up. It was carelessness on my part. Presumably, then, the gunshot you heard came from the firearm that you somewhat hastily took in your hands. On point of fact, my lord, I believe it did not. What? 
The barrel of the revolver I picked up was cold, and there was no smell of scent powder. That's what else I was going to suggest, like, um... That, um... There was... I feel like maybe there wasn't anyone else in the room, because then he would have heard footsteps of someone leaving. And the policeman would also have seen someone else leave. So what I think is, um... When Van Zeke entered, maybe he set off some kind of mechanism that accidentally shot Gregson. Or maybe Gregson was already dead before that, and then they just- someone just made a gunshot. No, but he smelled the gunpowder. So maybe he set off some kind of trap to just set off a different gun. But we, I didn't find another gun. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is the murder weapon. And when we examined it, um... I guess, like, I mean, there's like no... Yeah, cause there's a ring here! But what- I don't know, I don't know, okay, I should just move on with this. And let the trial play out. But, but then, where on earth is the gun that was fired? Whilst I would like to oblige you with an answer. I'm afraid I can't. I, too, would dearly like to know that. Uh... A man, you say? One of the witnesses, I presume. That's right. One of the street merchants working on- Oh, wait, that's Kazuma, whoops. One of the street merchants working on Fresno Street. Who are these merchants? A number of them had set up their stalls directly beneath the bordered window of the crime scene. A match seller, a newsmonger, and a peddler, they've all given statements saying that they heard the gunshot. And without thought of danger, they ran inside to see what had happened. Yes, Gina told us th about that yesterday, didn't she? They bust through the door, and with some force, it would seem. They did, and almost gave me a heart attack in the process. So you closed the door? Why would you close the door if there was no light? At least if the door was open, you could have- I don't- This is all very confusing. But you're supposed to be the Reaper. The first man to come in immediately noticed the revolver in my hand and fled. A policeman patrolling on Fresno Street heard the commotion. I was able to arrest the accused shortly after the incident occurred. Anyway, the man's scream drew my attention in that direction. Um, what do you mean by that? In what way did the body appear? I honestly can't explain it, but it's the truth. As far as I was concerned, the body hadn't been there until that point, and then suddenly, there it was. Did you perhaps hear the sound of the victim falling to the ground just beforehand? At that moment, what I heard was the sound of the floor, door flying open, and the scream of the man who came inside first, nothing more. I see. After the man fled, I examined the body. I was stunned to find that that it was Gregson. Hmm. Most curious blah 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 blah. How the inspector was killed or how his body seemed to appear out of nowhere. I have no idea. Surely the court has heard enough. My lord, the cross-examination has clearly revealed that the accused, Barak Van Zeeks, is lying on multiple fronts. Yeah, he's lying because he is hiding something. But not murder. What is that supposed to mean? Good gracious, counsel. Defendant is lying, you say? In his testimony just now, he claims that he failed to notice the victim's body because the rumor's dark. But he noticed the gun. That's correct. No, that's impossible. As proven by this candle up candelabrum. How does that prove anything? If you examine the tip of the long candle, you can see it has been blown off by a powerful impact. One would assume that the projectile from the firebomb passed through the victim and struck the candle. The problem comes when you consider the other two candles, which are clearly of a different length. Yes, I can see that only the candle that appears to have been struck by the bullet is long. We could reasonably expect someone to have lit all three candles together. Which begs the question of why only one has ended up longer than the others. That must be because the particular candle was extinguished when the others were still burning. Ah! That's right. 
When the candle was hit by the bullet, it obviously went out. But the other two candles would still have been burning. So the fact is... The victim's body would have been illuminated by the light still thrown by the candle, blah. I keep thinking you're saying cantaloupe, but wrong and adding in more syllables. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna call it cantaloupe from now on. I, I don't know how to pronounce it correctly. This is why English sucks. You don't know how to pronounce anything. And the accused claimed that he couldn't see the body clearly contradicts those facts. And now the next, to the next lie. There's more? The accused also claims never to have visited the scene of the crime before. That's the truth. In that almost empty room, the police discovered something very unusual. A board covered from top to bottom in police documents and newspaper cuttings. Yes, that's right. We saw it too. It goes without saying that the contents of the police documents cannot be divulged, however. They included a number of reports from various historical cases, the oldest of which was from 10 years ago. 10 years ago? This is starting to sound familiar. And there is a common thread linking all of the documents on that board. Indeed, what is this common thread, Council? They all relate to cases prosecuted in the court by Barrack Van Zeeks. All of them? And furthermore, all those cases are ones in which the defendant was acquitted. Good lord! Interestingly, none of these those, those defendants are alive today, because all of them have been sent to their graves by the Reaper. Ah! Oh no! In short, that digi little room is the Reaper's secret hideout and its base of operations. The Reaper's hideout? And yet the Reaper would claim never to have been in his own secret hideout. No one will believe that. No, the truth is, we've been looking at this backwards. Backwards? Explain, Council. Inspector Gregson was investigating the identity of the Reaper. When he discovered the location of the man's secret hideout, he was killed. As I'm sure everyone can imagine, by the Reaper's hand. What? It definitely wasn't Barak who killed him. Order! But it will, I hereby state the current opinion of the court. Barak Van Zeeks is an outstanding prosecutor who has rendered a great service to his country. However, it is with deep regret that I must concur with Prosecutor Asogi's contention. That the defendant's testimony exhibits a number of stark inconsistencies with the known facts. All I have done is state the truth as I know it. Asma's done a brilliant job as ever. He's drawing on his experience as a defense attorney to build his prosecution case and it's formidable. Counsel. You will submit the board that you just showed the court as evidence. I believe it to be fundamental in establishing the facts surrounding the Reaper's existence. Thank you, my lord. Notice board has been entered into court record. And now the prosecution would like to call new witnesses to the stand. Damn, Kazuma, you are so efficient. <laughs> you look at that stick figure, it looks like he's dancing. There are details of a whole raft of cases dating back years on here, aren't there? This paper from 10 years ago is browning with age, look. Out of interest, the most recent thing appears to be this newspaper cutting here. Oh, it's the same red-headed league ad advertisement that Mr. Scholes had picked out. And do you remember? There was a red hairpiece at the scene, too. Was Inspector Gregson an exponent of the red-headed league, then? Yeah, also- Oh, Bloody handprint. Oh, what's- why would the handprint be all the way up there? Like, how could it... That's not how to look! Oh, yes, it's a smudge of some kind. In fact, it looks just like a handprint. And the color. That's blood, isn't it? Dear, how disturbing. There's a bloody handprint on the backside. But it's all the way at the top. How could I ever get reached up there? And if we look on the diagram... Board was here, so the handprint was there, so... I mean, I guess you could do something from the fireplace here? I don't know. Close the door when you walk in if there's no light in here. There may have been a small oil lamp burning. Tricky, tricky. Hey, it's the toadiest of toes, Jelly. Hey, Sal, how you doing? Long time no see. I hope you've been well, dude. Ugh. I hope everyone is staying cool this summer because it has been freaking hot. Like my AC was practically running all day today. It was gross. 
Witnesses who saw events unfold on the day in question. They were mentioned in a previous testimony too, if you remember. Yes, the street sellers who heard the gunshot and went running into the room. Pretty well, lead the witnesses in. The defendant may step down from the witness stand. Certainly, my lord. Why would you bow like that when you're leaving the witness stand? Oh, wow. Oh, no, it's the bus man! It's the bus driver! So freaking hot, I got permanent swamp booty, it felt like. Yeah, I've just been feeling so gross, too. I have to have the fan constantly on, but I don't have it on right now, just in case my mic picks up the fan sound. So, witnesses, state your names and occupations for the court. Oh, that's his lip? That's disgusting. Oh, go see a doctor. Names? We don't use names. Lots of fancy for the likes of us. He has a red mark around his neck. Was he choked or hanged? We're just free and easy. Sell what we like, live where we want to live. I give them all vacant stares. They walk down Fresno and spit a few words into a verse for them. Ah, would I be right in assuming that all three of you make your living by selling whales on the street? Hey, <laughs> everyone calls me gossip. I sell jaunty little tippets to passerby, you know. Jaunty little tippets? What an absolute smasher for you, sir. Right up your guinea letters. Sixpence is the price, not a penny less. Wait, you're actually trying to sell it to me now? Oh, come on, sir. Don't tell me you're not interested. Try the man. Give him the money and see what it is. Pay the man, counsel. <laughs> all right, all right. Sixpence it is. 77 degrees outside right now, but my room always gets hot in the oven. I'm sweating right now with my AC on. If you have a south-facing window, then yeah, you're always going to have the hottest room. Thankfully, mine is like blocked by an indoor courtyard. So my room is actually the coolest in the house, but since I have, you know, lights and computer on for streaming, it gets hot. His lips, I know, yeah, his lips are pretty gross. Like, go see a doctor. That That's not normal. You won't regret it, sir. Now, got your listening ears on. Yes, pretty nurse. Couple. A young couple on Slight Street have just had twins. Um, is that it? <laughs> no, that's not it. It's gossip, isn't it? It wants to spread, but that bit's up to you in your mouth, of course. I got more, you know. Want another juicy one? Six pence a piece it is, if you're curious. I am curious, yes, about what's going on just under that fat bottom lip of yours. Namely that unusual bruise or whatever that's poking out from under your collar. What about the next witness, then? What name do you go by and what do you sell? Me, I'm Venus. That's what everyone calls me. Funny, in it? You sell bullets! Fireworks! That was the bang that they heard! I sell these lovely little fireworks to all local school kids! Six pence a pop. What do you say? Or maybe... Yeah. That could have set off the sound for everyone to come running. They could all be in cahoots to to set up to frame Barrack. Oh my god. You weren't exaggerating with Little. Do they actually sell? Oh yeah. The second years can't get enough of my Venus firecrackers. Especially when I tell them that if they get a hundred, they could blow up the school. Not the most savory of ideas, young lady. What do you say then, eh? Want a pot with six pence for a pot? Wait, what? You you want me to buy one? Tell you what, I'll let you in on a little secret. Get a hundred of them, you can blow up the whole courtroom. Try the woman. Give her the money and see if she's right. <laughs> Pay the woman, counsel. Alright, alright, I'll buy one. Lovely stuff. Right then. This is something a little bit extra, so just for you. The Venus special. Only six hundred pence. Six hundred? It's a hundred of my regular fireworks. Nothing little about that, is there? And there'd be nothing little about the punishment if I blew up the old Bailey either. Venus Firecrackers. Firecrackers has been entered into the court record, which means it wasn't the gunshot that went off. It was her firecrackers.
If you had had an idea, Mr. Nadahodo, you're staring at the end of the string of fireworks. Sorry, it's just that it's the Venus special. I was wondering what 600 pence worth of fireworks would sound like. Now we find out? What? B but she said it could blow up the courtroom. Sounds like a gunshot! Hey, hey! Alright, that was a fairly sizable bang. Ears are still rigging, Mr. Nanohoto. It sounded almost exactly like. A gunshot! Boop, boom, boom! So. The mark. The girl and the guy are definitely in on it. I don't think the old grandpa's in it. He's just the old grandpa. No, wait, but he was also. He kind of lied in his testimony about the coach incident with Magnus, whatever, McGilded. And the last witness, what name do you go by and what do you sell? I'm a thinker, babe. Think all sorts of things. I think, therefore I am. I am, therefore I think. I think. Because I stand there on the street watching the world go, go on about me. They call me the Observator. Get out of it, old man. Everyone calls you sandwich and you know it. So, you don't actually sell anything. A problem shared is a problem halved, as they say. I give advice, I do, and think what it means. I don't actually sell anything, no, come to think of it. Pity. No more purchases today, please. Well, we have quite a cast here, it seems. Hill Kazuma? No! Why would you say that? I think nerd, therefore I am nerd. <laughs> Let's be real, we'll, we're all nerds inside. We're all nerdy for at least one thing. No shame in it. The conductor business on Fresno Street from morning until night, my lord. And always in the same place, directly adjacent to the crime scene. I see. And thus they heard the gunshot, I suppose. Not only that, but they very bravely ran inside to see what was going on and witnessed the crime. They didn't bravely run inside. They ran inside to frame Barrack. Well, I'll be beckoned, I thought. Just between us. Hey, Mr. Miele, what am I to do? What a terrible thing I saw. What I think is, if all what we see is light and shadow, playing with our eyes is any of a thrill. But well, the court will hear the formal testimony of these three witnesses now. You will describe in detail what you witnessed and heard at the time of the incident. Witness testimony. We saw the whole thing from start to finish, we did. Everything from the moment they went in the building. What? Less than a minute after Reaper and gone inside, then we heard a big bang. Seems to be that quick talk to talk is quick to walk. Gossip couldn't wait to go and see what had happened. I ran into the room and there he was, the Reaper, golden hand, standing over the dead body. I was scared half to death, mate, so I ran off to find a copper. If these witnesses were there the whole day and saw everything, who did they see going inside the building? Only the victim, Inspector Gregson, and the accused, Barrack Van Zeeks. I've seen pictures of that Reaper in the paper. I know what it looks like. And just between us, folks love stories like this. I made myself a tiny sum already. But wait, the room was just one of the several flats in the building. Someone from another flat could have done it. All those flats on Fresno Street are un unoccupied. Of course they are. They're small, damp, dirty, and expensive to boot. The room in which the inspector was found is the only property in the building that's currently leased. And we know the leaseholder's name, don't we? It's Hugh Boone. Hmm. The testimony the court has just heard would appear to leave little room for doubt. It's becoming increasingly difficult to see how anyone other than the defendant could have committed the crime. No! Thank you for the candor, my lord. Counsel for the defense, you may proceed to cross-examine the witnesses. Yes, my lord. In a closed court like this, without a jury, the judge is the only person whose opinion matters. I have to break down this testimony somehow. <clears throat> from start to finish, everything from the moment they- You- How did you see this? That means you had to f have followed them into the building. When you say they, who do you mean exactly? Inspector Gregson and the defendant, Lord Van Zeeks? I suppose so. The likes of us don't know names of the high and mighty. 
I'll tell you one thing, it was the old Reaper that went in last, that's for sure and certain. Just behind Inspector Gregson, did they arrive at the same time as each other? No, no, not at all. First fella must have gone inside good 15 minutes before we heard the gunshot. The victim arrived 15 minutes before? Are you sure about that? Am I sure? Am I sure? Doesn't seem likely that I've forgotten a fellow with bright red hair like that, does it? Gregson was wearing a red wig. Yeah, they were really red, weren't it? Better than my flaming fireworks, even. That, that fiery red mop still burns on the inside of my eyelids, it is. Wait a minute. You're saying the man was a redhead? Aren't you listening, chum? Ah, he was a redhead. And he had a big trunk with him as well. But Inspector Gregson's hair isn't red. Not by any stretch of the imagination, but there was a red wig on the scene. It seems likely that the person you saw wasn't, in fact, Inspector Gregson at all, but some other third party. No, I hate to break it to you, but the witnesses are correct. What? Just have a look at this photograph of the victim taken at the scene. But, okay, so the wig was moved when they removed Gregson's body. Do an autopsy. Yes, that's Inspector Gregson, all right. And a red hairpiece. Ah, of course. We saw one on the floor when we investigated on the scene, didn't we? I still refuse to believe Inspector Gregson wore a hairpiece, though. So then why on earth would he have been wearing something like that? To go to the red-headed league, duh! Hmm, the color does seem to suit the man, one might say. The photograph will be submitted as evidence, police counsel. Photograph. And what became of the trunk that the red-headed victim was supposedly carrying? Let me inspect this photograph. So he's like, in the blood. Can't really see the wound. I guess he wasn't wearing his hat. Nothing really to see from this photograph. Okay. Back we go. Wait, um... Is there any blood on this? It was only the fact that it was a hairpiece that's the only thing examinable. Okay. RIP! <laughs> Gregson's DEAD! I was informed that no trunk was found at the scene. So it just disappeared? What? Do you expect this I've been watching the building every second, do you? You just said you saw everything that happened, you We definitely saw him in the dock going in there. No question about that. Less than a minute, we heard a big bang. By which presumably you mean the gunshots. All these little things, don't I? How would I know what a gunshot sounds like? But I've always thought it probably sounds a bit like this. And you say that you heard the noise almost as soon as you saw the defendant enter the building. That's right. It was almost straight away. Bang! It went just like that. Well, at least the Reaper, isn't he? It was what the French call a fail complete. When the Reapers turn around, the people are going in the ground. I mean, that's what he does, isn't it? I think we get the message. The Reaper couldn't allow the Inspector to live after he discovered his secret hideout. There can be no clearer motive for the crime. Hmm, yes. It's certainly an eminently credible motive. Great. And at that point, you ran inside, is that correct? Okay, gossip went in first, but it was Venus that went to the police first. So when Gossip ran to see what happened, did you go too? Well, me, I'm a bit hampered, you see. All the signs are that I can't move very well. You were way behind, presumably, with that sandwich board around your neck and that big sign in your hands. What a great burden you bear. Pardon me for asking, Mr. Um, sandwich, but is it possible you and I have met before? I'm not anybody, me. The signs are what make me who I am now. I sign, therefore I am. So, you weren't employed as an omnibus driver just a, under a year ago, then? I might be mistaken, but I believe his trembling has intensified, Mr. Nadahoro. Yes, I agree. He's clearly been through a lot. Turn down King Henry Street and the Black Widower's arms is just there. Oh dear, you made him hide behind a sign. Life is full of surprises. 
Rent a room, there he was, Reaper got in hand, standing over the body. So then you were the first person to arrive on the scene, is that right? That I was. Kicked the door open like a professional, I did, and yelled out, What's going off here? Lord Van Zeeks claimed all he heard was a man scream, though. And was it dark inside the room? No, not dark at all. There were candles burning on the wall. Really? And those fellow collapsed on the floor. Maybe Barrack had some kind of like thing in his eyes and he's like, I can't see? Just between us, it's the first thing I noticed when I got inside. Ah, I see. Even though Lord Van Zeke claims to not have seen any such lights on the wall. Next thing I noticed, there was someone standing right beside the body. The accused, Barrack Van Zeeks. That's right, the pale-faced reaper himself. I was a little shocked, I won't deny it, but I'm no little little coward. I stood mm. my ground and gave that ripper a cold hard stare myself. Do you have something to add, Mr. Sandwich? There's really nothing to me. Empty and head I am. Just two slices with no middle. I don't know what you could want with me. I think that maybe you just remembered something. Having heard Mr. Gossip's late statement, I mean. Last statement. I think it is. We're all nothing is really. We try to dress ourselves up as something else. At the end of the day, we're all just street sellers. That's enough out of you, Sandwich. Keep your trap shut now. Unless you want us to make you a real sandwich. When he saw the Reaper, he fell clean over on his backside. That's it? Oh, you rotten beggar. I told you to keep that a secret. He screamed, he did, screamed and scrambled off on all fours. That's all I wanted to say. Mr. Gossip, is this true? Oh, it's that slippery, that's why. Why was it slippery? Planted my hand in a filthy pool of blood, didn't I? Yuck. But you did it because the blood was not touched. What? A pool of blood? Oh, listen here. Even when I was sprawled on the floor. I still kept giving that ribber a cold hot stare, and don't you forget it. Let's just go back a little. Did you say you got blood on your head? I did, I. Happens to the best of us at times, don't it? So I was scared, so I slipped over. We can keep it just a skip. We can keep it just between us, can't we? No, Mr. Gossip. I'm going to have to ask you to add that information to your formal testimony. Oh, if I must. The witness will amend his testimony to include the aforementioned details at once. Okay, now I'm going to have to um, present the photograph and be like, Yo, you touched nothing! Saving it just in case, because I don't want to be wrong. I hope I'm right. Yeah, there's no, there's no handprint. Damn it, I'm wrong! Yeah, do I have to press this statement first? Ah, uh, no. I'm sorry! Press. You wiped your hand on the floor? Well, who wants blood in his hand, eh? Horrible stuff. And they might have thought I'd done it. <laughs> no ta. And you didn't think that might be a problem? It doesn't really matter if I left a few gubbery hampers on the floor. They'll get it cleaned up in the end, won't they? Don't make such a fuss. That's the message from all of us. Is something wrong, Council? No, my lord. I didn't remember anything in the report about a bloody handprint on the floor. That's all. You come at me with all that. You can't intimidate me. I know what I did. I wiped it off. He didn't wipe it off on the floor. It was... It was a signboard. So, okay, okay, what they thought was, what they thought was a gunshot was the signboard falling over. But then who put it back up? What? I wonder, could that be what happened? Mr. Narahodo? I don't have all the answers yet, but I think we may have just uncovered a vital clue. No, no, now I know what, I, now I know what to present. Go back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you wiped off the blood from your hand on the floor of the room. Are you quite sure about that? Well, what else do you expect me to have done, eh? Does it really matter? The police found no such handprint on the floor during their investigations. 
What exactly is the defense? If you listen, you'll find out, Pros Prosecutor Asogi. Certainly there was no bloody hand found on the floor. What are you trying to say? There was a handprint in blood left very clearly at the scene. On the back of his notice board. Ah! 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 Why would he be freaked out about it? Ah, oh, yes, indeed. Indisputably, a handprint in the distinctive color of blood. Oh, hey, you're dead right. That's my right hand. I know it anywhere. The witness very definitely testified that he wiped his hand on the floor. Any handprints on the back of the board are irrelevant. Not if the board itself had fallen over onto the floor. In that case, it's quite possible for the witness's handprint to have ended up there. Just look at the floor plan of the room. The notice board was on the opposite corner of the room of the victim and in an upright position. Even if it had somehow toppled and was lying on the floor at the time. It would have been a considerable distance from the body. Unless Gossip is the killer and he already had the blood on his hand and he noticed it and he was just like, Oh, whoops, and wiped it off. I fell over when I came across the body. It was basically right next to the corpse, not on the other side of the room. In other words, the defense's assertion is contradictory. But there is a handprint there! Yes, it is. There's a very definite contradiction here, for which there must be a reason. I take it that you formulated a proper hypothesis, counsel. Regarding this apparent discrepancy between the witness's account and the handprint found at the scene. I have, my lord. The discrepancy between the witness's account and the location of the handprint is explained by... I don't think it's another handprint because I, I don't think we saw one. The board moving. Or false testimony. I'm, I'm gonna say it's false testimony because like the dude has a red mark around his neck. But I'm gonna look at the walkthrough. Just to make sure we don't take forever. Mm. Ah, frack, it's the board moving. The real contradiction here is the handprint itself, not where it was found. As the court can see, it's upside down. Oh gracious, so it is. Then why does he have a red mark around his neck? If the witness had put his hand against the board, the finger should be pointing upwards. What, what does that tell us? It tells one simple fact. When this handprint was made, the board must have been lying on the floor as I previously suggested. Which means that after the incident, it must have been moved. What? Maybe that's why Van Zeeks didn't see the body because the board was covering him. But he did see the gun on the floor because he could see the gun from under the... Hmm? You're claiming that somebody moved the notice board after the shooting. Then tell the court who. I don't know that yet, but the point is... When you consider all the testimony we've heard so far, we can now be very clear on one point. And that would be... The position of the notice board at the time of the incident, my lord. So, counsel, I must ask you to clarify your ass assertion for the court. But who would move it and why would they have reason to move it? At the time of the incident, where do you maintain the notice board was situated? I mean, if the body is clearly here and he was next to the body, then it would have had to be here. Right? This is the only possible location. Immediately adjacent to the doorway. If the court would think back to the testimony given by the defendant earlier, he said that when he entered the room, it was dark and he couldn't see the body. Boyek! If the notice board had been there, the body would have been completely hidden from view. And the light from the candles would have been blocked, making the room appear darker. But the accused also claims that the victim's body simply appeared before him. That's true. Or in his precise words. Just as I picked up the firearm to examine it, the door fell open and I heard a man scream. Is the only other body who inspector question appear before me? I don't know about calling the scream, but he was talking about me and make no mistake. Because it was me that kicked the door open. If 
you look again at the floor plan... Oh, if you kick it open, then the force of the door will knock the board over. Consider what would happen if the door to the room was thrown open with force. That... I can't. The door struck the notice board, knocking it over and making the victim's body visible. Gracious. My client has told nothing but the truth. He has simply described what he saw. Ah. Uh. All da, all da. Council, how has this not come to light before now? After the incident, somebody must have righted the board and moved it. Into the position where the police, myself, and my colleagues saw it when investigating the room. But who? Witness, what have you to say for yourself? What? Me, my lord! You and your fellows were there at the scene before anybody else. It goes without saying that you must know something about the position of the notice board. The witnesses in the stand will testify again. You will each explain exactly what you did upon arriving at the scene of the crime. Eh, stop looking over your glasses at me. I get the message. Like, you're clearly the most suspicious because you got a red mark around your neck. I don't know anything about that therefore notice board. Just wipe my hand on it, that's all. Don't look at me, I haven't got a clue about it. I was doing business with some second years at the time. But there was no one else there! What? I don't know anything about anything. I'm just a bystander, me. Just a sign at the crossroads of life. What's that rape, I bet? He's got a face that screams bored. I can't see how this changes anything anyway. The detective still died when we heard a gunshot. Or, he could have been dead before, because there's no time of death on his autopsy. Right? I'm not... I'm not crazy. There's... Time of death. Not stated. Why? That is so weird. So none of you can elaborate further. Shaken by the crime they witnessed, and with only the light of a few candles and an oil lamp to, by which to see. We can't expect these witnesses to be able to give a more precise account of what happens. That's right, yeah. I don't pay to expect too much. It's man's endless quest for knowledge that's destroying the world. That's what I think. To you, really? In any case, as this testimony shows, even if the notice board was moved by somebody following the incident, it makes no difference. When the gunshot rang out, the accused was the only person at the scene. In short, the only person who could possibly have committed this crime is Barak Van Zeeks. Okay, so they say that Gregson was shot at point blank, and that's why there's gunpowder on on his clothes. But doesn't don't fireworks also leave some kind of powder? So it could have been fireworks that got set off. Like. I, we can't get a clear look of his clothes in the photograph, but, like, there were scorch marks on his clothes, no? In short, the only person who could have possibly committed this crime is Barak Van Zeeks. None of this wrangling over the board changes that simple, simple fact. If the board was there in his way, he couldn't have gotten a clear shot to Gregson, so yes, the board's position does matter. I'm, I'm sorry I'm getting mad at you, Kazuma, but... Ah! Quite so, quite so. Does the defense still wish to cross-examine the witness, despite the circumstances? Most oh, certainly, my lord. Very well. Then you may proceed, counsel. Back. Oh, Kazuma, your eyes are so beautiful. I just wiped my hand on it, that's all. So you admit that it was the board you wiped your bloody hand print on. Admit it? What's to admit? It's plain as day for old say a smashing print on my right hand. Perhaps you wanted to hide that handprint. So you righted the notice board and pushed it into the corner, did you? Yeah, no. Imagine the weight of that freight lump. You wouldn't look like a powerful and well-nurtured man. Well, did you see anybody else moving the board? I got those of steel, I can tell you. But I, even I have my limits. There was a body on the floor in front of me and the Grim Reaper himself standing over it. It was precious little light inside either. My bottom lit was all a quiver. In other words, this witness is unable to give definite testimony on that point. Yes, so it would see. Don't look at me. I think you have a clue. You're lying to me. 
When you say you were doing business with them, you mean you were selling them fireworks. Yeah, what else? This private school just around the corner, see? These cheeky little sand cells have got a plan to blow that school to kingdom come. Ah. I've been telling on them, letting their teachers know what they're up to. Oh, you have? Yeah, wouldn't want anyone to get out, so I let the school know the kids are playing with dodgy toys. Then, praise the lord, the teachers take all the fireworks off them. And then, praise the lord again, the kids all come back to buy more. Everyone's happy, see? What a racket. Oh, Ooh, whoa, that skipped by way faster than I thought it was going to be. And sometimes the teachers give me a little bonus to thank me for letting them know. It's a busy old life selling explosives. Venus is a guileless, guileful goddess indeed. Well, turn mm. barefaced lies is kind of my thing, really. I'm never so good at it. So you're clearly lying to us right now! Something wrong, Mr. Sandwich? If I said it was, could we just leave it at that? Would that be the end of it? Um, no. Did Miss Vetus' statement just now bring something to mind, perhaps? Philosophical thoughts. Be philosophical thought. Let's say there was a great liar. And that great liar said, without batting an eye, Helen Bearfest lies is kind of my thing. I'm ever so good at it. Would those words of hers be a lie too, or the truth? In which case, she's not a liar. Ooh, it's a hellish paradox, that one, don't you think? I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. But it seems to me you're suggesting Miss Venus has been lying, are you? What are you on about, old man? Trying to cause trouble, are you? You won't like that. And I'll wrap your old body in firecrackers and set them off. That'll give you something to tremble about. That is assault and illegal? <laughs> You have a startling, disturbing mind behind that sweet and innocent face, young lady. So, Miss Venus has lied in her testimony. Is that what you're saying, Mr. Sandwich? Well, if it means Bell Bay burning hell fire for the rest of my days, so be it. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Can you elaborate, please, sir? Old Blabbermouth here headed for the room where the gunshot seemed to come from. But there was somebody else who crept up the stairs behind him, too. Right? That rotten liar over there! <laughs> Do you mean to say that you did, in fact, betake yourself to the scene of the crime after all? Duh! She's a witness! That means she was clearly in the room! Like, what? Oh my gosh! What did I tell you, eh? Said I was good at telling barefaced lies, didn't I? Yes, you mentioned it. Well, that revelation rocked the whole courtroom, didn't it? No. Who knew firecrackers packed such a punch? You did indeed visit the scene of crime, did you, young lady? Good grief. Well, now you come to mention it. There's perhaps. I do clearly remember climbing the stairs to that room, yeah. Either you clearly remember it or you don't. Well, I shall consider a fitting punishment for this perjurous act later. For the time being, you will immediately amend your testimony to reflect the truth. Oh yes, my lord, of course. Ba -ba -da -ba, peek inside the room where it happened. <gasps> the room where it happened. The room where it happened. Make it have it of lying, do you, Miss Venus? Well, I suppose so. I don't really know, to be fair. If you want my advice, do I take everything I say with a pinch of salt? Alright. But you didn't, in fact, go to the room where the victim was killed on the day in question, didn't you? Oh, please. As if I would. I can't think of anything more terrifying. I am going to slap her face so hard. The truth, please. Hazuma, can you just take out your sword and threaten her? Well, alright. Just a bit, then. I mean, a girl my age just cares about stuff, you know. Did you touch anything at the scene? Oh, please, as if I would. I mean, there was a dead body on the floor. The truth, please. Well, alright, just a bit then. I'd look to see if there was anything I could sell. 
So I did get the place I once over, but it was nothing to write home about. Right. Now, I hesitate to ask, but... You didn't move the notice board by any chance, did you? Oh, please. I suppose I would touch anything like that. Just a few bits of loose change is all I add. The truth, please. Well, alright then. I thought there might be something worth having underneath it. A blast at the flipping thing. Sorry, flip the blasted thing. You're telling us that you did move that board? I think that did slip out, didn't it? What? The Daft Bomb Pot! I don't believe it. It doesn't think. So, did you find anything then? Something that you might have taken, perhaps, to sell? Oh, please. I should be... The truth now! I might have found this little pocket watch under the notice board, I suppose. But a bit of junk like... So it was you, was it? You're the one who took it! Gina? Young lady, may I remind you where you are? That watch. That watch there. Cousin to Inspector Gretzen from the yard for a big case he solved ten years ago. That's a case, no doubt. The boss used to wind it up every evening without fail when he was waiting for his grub to come in at the pub. He. I swiped it off him once and blimey was he upset. He gave me a right earful. But he hadn't missed a day in the last ten years, portioned it and winded it. It meant the world to them, that watch did. Possibly not the best thing to go diving for then. Not all that, though. I took it to Jabbers' that night to ask how much it was worth, but the old dealer wouldn't touch it. Wouldn't give me a penny for it. Said it wasn't working. Talked about and worthless if he called it. Ah! Knew I shouldn't have lifted it! That watch must be submitted as evidence at once. Oh, please, just... Just so long as you promise to give it back when we're done. You stole it! You loser! Not a chance. I'll swipe it from you if you try to get your grubby bits on it again. That's enough. Hand the watch to Bailiff forthwith. Now, now, children, watch your manners. Good lord. It's cracked. Glass appears to be broken. We should have fries in memory of Grayson. <gasps> now that you mention fries, yo, I really want some McDonald's fries. I know McDonald's is garbage and disgusting, but McDonald's fries and McDonald's McFlurries, Oreo McFlurries, are like so good. Man. Oh. More than likely, it shattered when the inspector was shot. It doesn't take anymore either. Which is why Jabbers didn't want it. What a waste, day. What time does the watch say? Wait, is it? It's not. Oh, he said what time it stopped at. Yes, indeed. It appears to have stopped at the hour of five. Exactly when the gunshot was heard, then. Which supports the prosecution's claim, of course. Rexon's pocket watch has been entered in court. I'm back. Welcome back, Regal. Well, it would appear that the mystery of the moving notice board has been solved at long, at least. It says five. The glass over the face uh, really is badly cracked. Look. What a shame when the inspector clearly looked after it so carefully. I imagine Mr. Sholmes could repair it, don't you? Yes, I should think so. I'm very, very adept at things like this. A useful man to have around, in fact. But kindly remember that he's a great detective, Mr. Nadahoto, and not an odd job man. The thing is missing. There's a tiny little stub sticking out from the small hole here. Look. I suppose there must have been a little knob or something on that for setting the time. In that case, seeing as we know the inspector took such good care of this watch, it probably broke when the incident occurred, didn't it? Yes, of course. Which could mean there's a small part of the watch still at the scene, maybe. Will that small part tell us, like, where- Ooh, hello. Ah, there's a tiny little keyhole here. Can you see? Oh yes, that's probably the winder used to wind up the mechanism. It looks a little unusual, don't you think? Yes, you need a right key to wind it, I imagine. Why do I feel as though I've seen something? Something a bit like a key that's about the right size to fit this hole. It'd be wonderful if we had the key. Let's check carefully over what we've already found. I'm guessing it's the gun? No, it's this! 
This is the key, this is the key, this is the key. Turn his head! Did you miss me? Yes, terribly. But when did it break? They're saying it broke at 5 o'clock when Gregson was shot. But did it break when on his person, or did it break because the notice board fell on it? Because he could have been dead, and the pocket watch slipped out, and then the notice board fell on it. Look! The key! Oh, so the key! But it's tiny, though. Couldn't be a key for a door. What is it for, I wonder? Let's examine the shape again and be like, Pocket Watch! Mr. Sato, do you think perhaps this key could be the key for Inspector Gregson's watch? Oh, yes, it could be! Let's try it at once! There's not a moment to lose! I knew it. A perfect fit. And look! Inspector's watch has started going again! Ah, so it has obviously not just been wound up, that's all. What is it, Mr. Sato? Well, if the watch isn't actually broken after all, I feel like it could have, been, have profound implications. She's deep in thought now. Perhaps I'd better start thinking deeply, too. So it's not completely broken, he just didn't wind it up, but Gina said that he used to wind it up at the pub every night. Can I examine the watch again? Oh. That says it's done, that says it's And- wait! But didn't we find the- where did we find the police doll exactly? Damn it, I don't remember. And as predicted, it had very little bearing on the case. Uh. Now then, continue with your cross-examination, please, counsel. Yeah, I'm just a bystander to set the crossroads of life. But you did go to see what happened in a room, didn't you? There's no street, it's my whole world. It's all I know, and all I know all of it. I have to make it my business to know if I want to hold my side up high. But you did go to see what had happened. It's not a destination that is important, it's how you get there, isn't it? Did you notice the notice board in the room? If you think about it, we're both the same species, aren't we? Both different members of the sign family. I'd spotted it, I might have tried to trip it up out of a sense of rivalry, I admit it. Someone really needs to tell you that you're no homo sapiens. Wait, that you're homo sapiens, not homo sinians. Ha ha ha. Does that mean you didn't notice the board? I can only repeat what I said before. I don't know anything about anything, I'm just a bystander, me, just at a sign at the crossroads of life. In which case, just who's responsible for moving the bo notice board? Wait, but I already completed all that. Okay, sorry, I'm gonna uh, use the walkthrough because we figured out who moved the notice board. Uh, Greg's pocket watch. Examine that pocket watch. Yeah, we already did the key. Press. Oh! Press- press 5. Whoops. Go back. I'm not gonna press you. Screw you. It was 5 o'clock in the afternoon that you all heard the loud bang, wasn't it? Maybe the notice board fell over. Maybe it didn't. Maybe I fell over. Or maybe I didn't. Dreba's fate sealed either way because of that gunshot we all heard. Your fate sealed too. My fate? That's right. The defense is fated to lose. Kazuma! And the prosecution to win. Kazuma! Hey, let me move my... Let's skip as much as this game possible. But I kind of want to, like, figure out on my own, like, what's happening. In other words, it all hinges on that single gunshot. But if I could just find some problem with that part of their story, it may be possible to change all our fates. Of course, none of that changes the fact that I heard what I heard, does it? Not much to go on. As you pointed out, Mr. Nadohodo, there's no question about the notice board that the notice board was moved, but someone must have done it. It was the girl! But how did it happen after events, so maybe Kazuma's right and it's not relevant to the case. But it seems to have been deliberately positioned so as to hide the body from view. But I feel sure that there's some deeper significance to all of this. Yes, I know what you mean. I have no doubt there are more clues to be uncovered. You're on the right track, I can feel it. Uh, whatever. Alright then. 
Okay, so um, maybe I present the the firecrackers at his thing. Or do I present the watch? Ah, oh, frack! I'm gonna just. I examine that. Wait, do I press them again? Oh! I read a spoiler! Oh no! <laughs> ah! Uh, but yeah, I gotta present his watch. Not the firecrackers. I'm afraid that's not necessarily the case. Oh? At the scene, we found this key to the winder- to the winder of the inspector's pocket watch. Key? And having wound the pocket watch, we discovered that it, in fact, still works. You see, the watch didn't stop because it was broken at all. And that fact... ...completely undermines one of the most fundamental premises on which this entire case has been built. So though- how? What? Yeah, <laughs> Bulbasaur! Older! For council! The watch was stopped at almost exactly 5 o'clock! Yeah, which is just when we heard the gunshot. It is exactly the hour. Time was showing on the watch tells us nothing other than what it was wound down. What it wound down. It's merely a coincidence that it happened to be at 5 o'clock. Even if that's true, the three witnesses here all heard the gunshot at 5 o'clock. So that's obviously when this crime was committed. No, that doesn't hold. Why not? Recall what Inspector Lestrade said only moments ago. The boss used to wind it up every evening without fail when he was waiting for a script to come at the pub. He had a Mr. Dane the last time he was passing and winded it. He made the world tell him that watch did. The victim was in the habit of winding his watch once a day in the evening. We can reasonably assume, therefore, that he wound the timepiece on the evening before he died as well. Yes, that would be entirely reasonable. But if that's the case, you wouldn't expect the watch to have completely wound down by 5 o'clock in the following day. Oh, I. Well, I'll explain it then. In summary, the evening before the day of the incident when the gunshot rang out in that room, the inspector was already unable to wind his watch. Can't mean. What would stop a man winding his watch if he's been in the habit of winding it every single evening for the 10 years? The obvious answer is that he was already dead. But how do you know what time he wound the watch every evening? Like Gina said when he ate in the pub, he could have eaten dinner different times of the day. Like, what? So Gregson was already dead. That's why there's no time of death on the autopsy because the coroner couldn't tell because his body was too like, rigor mortis. Order! Counsel, that is the most extraordinary claim. <laughs> extraordinary isn't the word. It's absurd. You claim he was already dead the night before. Do you really think that Scotland Yard's coroner would have overlooked something like that? Yeah, well, um... On that subject, there is something rather surprising. There's actually an omission in the coroner's report. Time of death. Is not noted. Pretty freaking obvious. That's right. Wait a minute. I'm forgetting that my legs don't went from under me when I kicked the door in. What do you mean? Like I said, I planted my hand in a dirty puddle of dirty great puddle of blood. Yes. So the victim's blood hadn't dried. It was fresh. He catches on fast, doesn't he? <laughs> But that blood could be explained in any number of ways. It could have been put there afterwards. The firecracker set off in Gregson's body, which opened a hole or something in his chest, which made fresh blood come out. Or something. Does my learned friend think that fresh blood is available on every street corner? Ah. Well, it needn't necessarily have been the human blood, of course. Or it wasn't human blood. We've been told previously that Scotland Yard has no way to identify blood as human. The problem is currently being researched. At present, you are correct. It is beyond our abilities. 
So then, a chicken's blood could have been used, for example. It's certainly a possibility that it wasn't the inspector's blood at all. But the gunshot was heard at 5 o'clock that afternoon. That's beyond question. Is it, though? What? Given that the time of death of the victim has already been called into question, it isn't beyond the realms of possibility that what these witnesses heard wasn't a gunshot at all. Oh, please, what are you trying to say? I was not know what you heard, and it was a loud bang that came from that there room. Now you he has a whip, still from his cabbie driving days. <laughs> now you listen to me. A street seller's ears are his livelihood. I don't doubt your ear, sir, but all, all you can state with certainty is that you heard a noise. Eh? Explain yourself then, counsel. A noise that sounds like a gunshot, which could have been made with... Firecrack. Something like this. The culprit could have set off one of these to fake a gunshot. Oh, gracious. The very fireworks that are sold by the witness. Hold on a minute. Why are you saying I did it? My pretty little firecrackers only make a little pop anyway. Not a hundred of them together. The Venus special that you sell for 600 pennies sounds like this. As the court can now attest, it sounds very much like a gunshot, in fact. Ah! You're trying to suggest that somebody set off one of those fireworks off at the scene. I'm suggesting that somebody knew the defendant was in the room at 5 that day, and sought to implicate him by creating a sound like a gunshot for these peddlers on Fresno Street to hear. But even the accused himself has testified that he saw no one else in the room at the time. Whether it was a gun or firecracker, the only person pre present to cause that bang was Barrack Van Zeeks. One with a match, my firecrackers get pop. See? That's why people like them. I fear for your fingers, my young lady. Recently, during my time here in Britain, I've learned of a very useful invention indeed. Something called a... Um, a time bomb. Good heavens, a bomb! Yes, a device that allows you to blow up whatever you like, whenever you like. Mr. Naruhoro, I worry that your unfortunate phrasing there may link you to yet another in international incident. Ah, no, 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 wait, it's it's the wherever you like, whenever you like part that's important. A timed device. Yes, exactly, a timed device. Something of that nature could have been planted at the scene. A device that was able to produce the sound of a gunshot long after the culprit had left. The extravagant claim will have to be substantiated with evidence, counsel. What proof do you have to suggest in any way that a timed device was employed to create the gunshot sound? The candle! As the court has already discussed, the tip of one of the candles in this can cantaloupe has been blown off. Indeed, because it was struck by the bullet which presumably passed to the victim. I don't think that's possible, my lord. The fireworks set off the scorch box on the wall. The fireworks were on that candle, and the candle lit it up when it was time. Not possible, why? Because of the scorching. There are gunpowder scorch marks clearly visible on the broken candle. There are? Goodness, yes. But well, is not the case. But they were also scorching on the victim around the bullet entry wound. That's right, there was. But as we heard earlier, Scorching like that only occurs when the target is at very close range, a matter of centimeters from the gun. Ah. Which means that the scorching on the candle can't possibly be the result of a gun's shot. You're suggesting it came from the fireworks. How can that be, eh? The fact that there's such a visible scorching on the candle suggests that the fireworks must have been right next to it when it, they exploded. Or to put it another way, the candle and firecrackers were joined together. The culprit somehow attached the firecrackers at a point partway down the candle. After the killer had left the scene, the candle slowly burnt down along with the other two. Until eventually ignited the fuse of the firecrackers generating a loud bang. And that is how these three witnesses came to believe they'd heard a gunshot at 5 o'clock. Yo, girl, do you remember who you sold the firecrackers to? Well, what a plot. 
And this implies that the victim would have had died earlier than we've been led to believe. The previous day, even. Now, now. You just told your horses. All this lot here saw the victim going into the building, remember? Anyone could have been wearing the wig, though. I wouldn't forget that flame-colored hair even if I wanted to. The person you saw entering the building wasn't the victim at all. Consider this. Ah. Obviously, anybody can wear a wig. So the person that these witnesses saw entering the building 15 minutes before the incident occurred could easily have been someone else entirely wearing the red hairpiece. Someone else? Do you mean to say... It was the same person who could try the firecracker trick. In other words, Inspector Gregson's killer. <laughs> Azuma? Ha 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 ha. Oh, very impre impressive, do you know, Skenado Horo? Azuma? I'm really quite amazed you've come this far. But after all, wasn't I the one who told you that you had all the markings of a great defense lawyer? Are you praising me, or are you trying to mock me? I'm confused. I also noted the lack of a time of death in this report. A stark omission. But as far as I'm concerned, this whole country's justice system leaves a lot to be desired. What are you trying to say? Order! Order! Prosecutor Asogi! What on earth do you mean by that statement? I hear that many of the leading members of Britain's judiciary are present to observe this trial today. We cannot allow even the slightest doubt to be overlooked. The defense's assertion about the time of death based on the victim's stopped watch is just conjecture. But while the possibility exists that my learned friend may be correct, we have a duty to explore it. Hmm. Well, certainly, I would agree with you. And what immediately comes to mind is, of course, what was Inspector Gregson doing and where did he go on the day before the incident? Do you know? The inspector always carried out his investigative work alone. His movements were treated as confidential within Scotland Yard. Even within the Yard. However, considering the evidence we've been presented with so far, I'd say it's fairly apparent what case the man was pursuing. Wouldn't you, my learned friend? Do you have a feeling about what case he might have been investigating? Yes, I agree. Surely. My lord. The defense believes it can explain to the court. The case that was being investigated by Inspector Gregson at the time of his death. Very well, counsel. Present your argument to the court. What evidence is blah 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 blah. Uh, I just noticed the music is kind of a remix of Kazuma's theme. It was... The Red-Headed Lee! Wait. Okay. Why was it this? I believe this red hair piece points to the answer. We might assume it was a part of a disguise used to carry out an under undercover investigation. Surely not. This brightly colored hair piece would only serve to make the inspector more noticeable. Yes, that's quite true. It would definitely have made him stand out in a crowd. Except, that is, in a crowd of gentlemen from the Red-Headed League. The Red-Headed League? So, you've already worked it out, then. What on earth is it this all about? Is there such an extraordinary League of Gentlemen? The Red-Headed League is currently under investigation for a grand deception. A deception of what nature, Council? They've been targeting Red-Headed men all across, across all of London and tricking them out of small sums of money. Two men were arrested for the misdemeanor only yesterday, in fact. My lord, the defense calls for those two men to be summoned at once. Two redheads? Inspector Gregson clearly infiltrated a red-headed league using this hairpiece. So it's very likely that he had direct contact with these criminals. And it's quite possible that such contact led to more serious events. I concur that we cannot in good conscience leave this new avenue unexplored. Well done, Mr. Nadahodo. Well, it's another possible line of inquiry for us, at least. Prosecution will make immediate arrangements for the charged men to appear. Bring these two red-headed league conspirators before me, Prosecutor Asogi. 
At once, my lord. Very good. We have a 30 minute recess. Court is adjourned. Adjourned. No! Why? Things are moving! Not another day. Wait, it is another day? What? <laughs> no! I thought... No, it's only a 30 minute recess! Wait, but it says to be continued! What? Wait, I'm gonna see if it's a... Oh, there you are, Otto. What kept you, my dear fellow? Hello, Mr. Sholmes. Gina. You sure about what you said in there? But the boss, you know, actually died the day before. Pretty hard to swallow. Yes. I was shocked by the revelation too, Gina. As was I. Possibly more shocked than both of you. Not a competition, Mr. Sholmes. But I was more shocked than all of you put together. This is the autopsy report in question, is it? Yes, it's strange that there's no time of death noted. I suppose there's a simple explanation, or perhaps it was a delib deliberate omission. Oh dear, if it was deliberate, it puts me in mind of the last case we worked on, and Dr. Scythe. I know. Anyway, it seems that on the day before Lord Van Zeeks discovered his body, Inspector Gregson was investigating the Red-Headed League, so perhaps something happened with them. Come to think of it. Asma is a snake? You leave Kazuma alone! He's a good boy! You had trouble with those League men too, didn't you, Mr. Sholmes? You were taken in by their trick. No, no, no. Naturally, I wasn't taken in, as you put it. My sleuth hound interest was merely piqued slightly by the rare scent of a weekly four pound income. And that scent masked the underlying scent of deception, I suppose. He hide in time of death. No, no! He can't really hide it because there was no time of death. The two criminals in question are the pair we saw being arrested yesterday, aren't they? In Mr. Sholmes' suite, I mean. That's right, Sus. And it was me what took him in. Thanks to a tip-off by a good, law-abiding citizen. Indeed, yours truly. So it's going to be that pair in the witness stand next, is it? Something doesn't quite make sense to me, though. The day before Inspector Gregson was found, you hadn't had trouble with the Red-Headed League yet, hadn't you? Why would the Inspector have been investigating them? Well, the likely explanation would be that Gregson's own sleuth hound interest was piqued by the rare scent of a weekly four-pound income. No, Tom, with the same brush as you, Sholmes. Yes, well, and there's the whole issue of Inspector Gregson being investigated by Lord Van Zeeks for some reason. The Reaper, the Red-Headed League, Inspector Gregson, Lord Van Zeeks, and Kazuma. I feel as though he knew we'd arrive at this point somehow. Gosh, I think you're right. What's he really trying to achieve here today? All the answers sh will soon be revealed. Observe the time, my dear fellow. This recess will be over shortly. Yes, you're right. So is this a trial part two, or what? Asuma was determined that he should be the one to prosecute this trial. And he was determined that I should take the defense. Just what is it that he's hoping to make me see, I wonder? I get the feeling we're a long way from the end of this trial yet. Don't say that. Chilly toasty toes, comfy toasty toes. I am actually very hot and sweating. <laughs> but I am pretty comfy. Are you ready then, Mrs. Soto? Yes. Like, it's only been like an hour and 40 minutes, so I feel like I could go a bit longer. Let's just see how far this goes. In the name of her majesty, the queen, I hear blah 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 blah. We love back Van Zeeks, uh, murder. Do not say this trial is far from over, just end the game. We're almost there, Regal, we're almost there. My lord. Have you some of the witnesses I've requested? Yes, the two members of the Red-Headed League who planned and carried out the deception. They arrived not long ago from the local prison by police carriage. If you say so. No, it's gonna end soon. I believe it in my heart. Bailiff, well, flush the two men into the courtroom. I love your haircut, it's very cute. Hahaha, <laughs> thank you. I don't know if I want to get it trimmed to get it short again or if I just want to grow it out. We'll see. I don't want to grow it out so that I could just tie it up for the rest of summer because it's freaking hot. 
But, you know, with short hair, my head's lighter. I don't know. Uh, by the way, it's time to give up on Cosmo. Who's Cosmo? Trim it? Hahaha. <laughs> These two men are currently being held by the police on suspicion of attempted extortion. You may omit your occupations, but state your names now for the court. I am Fabienne de Rousseau. A descendant of the great Rousseau, de Rousseau family from Nice and France. And my name is Peppino de Rossi. Oh, so they're both reds. Rousseau and Rossi. I am the third son of the great family of de Rossi, the landowners from Napoli. The two men first became acquainted at a boarding school for European nobility. Those who graduate from this... Temsik are the future leaders of Europe. Temsik? What? Do you have any idea how boring it is to be born with noble blood? Hello. I make it my mission to get the better of the world by employing the little grey cells of my brain. That is all I am trying to do, eh? So... That's the only reason for this whole grand deception you've been carrying out? Oui, you can say that. Not bad, eh? He has the grand ideas, but the petty parents. This strange combination is at the charm of the hilarious brothers. Hilarious, ha ha ha. The couple? Listen to me, Peppino. I have two things to say to you. Eh? Que? Are you about to tell me one of your grandi anecdotes? And viva! Firstly, I want you to stop calling me this couple. And secondly, we are not the hilarious brothers. This is serious business. Hey, Bello. There it is. The couple's trump card. The furrowed brow. It is deep, oh, couple. The furrow and the meaning of your words. The court has been led to believe that under the banner of the red-headed league, you have conspired to swindle money from unsuspecting members of the public. Is this true? Oui, c'est ça. And what exactly was the nature of this deception by which you planned to defraud? Hello, I will explain it. No, capo. Leave it to me. As you see, we both have the vivid red hair, though. No? At school, we were teased for this without pity. The capo here, he was many times behind the schoolhouse, crying like the trophy fountain. Ooh, those dogs. One day, the world will suspect us redheads. Cosma? What about Cosma? <laughs> yes, he's handsome. Oh, whatever. His dialogue wasn't important. Say bien, Pepino. Enough. I will explain the rest. The first step was the newspaper advertisement. About one week before the plan was put into operation, we, listened to the, we listed the same notice in every paper in London. Yes, we saw that notice. It was this one, I believe, entitled to the Red Head Leak. Oui, c'est ça. I am honored that you have seen it. It states that the only condition for joining the League is having flame-colored hair, and that if you satisfy the interview panel and are admitted into the League, you could receive a weekly income of four pounds. On the date specified, red-headed hopefuls gathered in droves at a park specified in the advertisement. And from each person present, this pair took an application fee of five shillings. And with the money, to France. Is the plan most elegant, no? No, it was most dishonorable. But to be frank, I'm stunned anybody was foolish enough to be taken in by such an obvious trick. The park was described by one witness as choked with red-headed folk like Coster's orange barrow. And the day on which all of these men gathered to apply was the day before the victim was discovered. Crucially, these two men spoke face to face with every single person present that day. We. Oui. I have more, seen more red-headed people in one day than I have uh, seen the rest of my life. See, si, see. Si. And now, every time I see the couple's hair, I feel sick to my stomach. Anyway. Why have we been summoned there today? Sorry? The day for our trial was not until tomorrow, I was told. Naturally, neither of these men have been told any details about this trial. Give up on him, it's time. I will never give up on Kazuma. I will never give him up. I will never let him down. I will never run around and desert him. Okay? They've only seen been shown this photograph. Pretty good. So, Mr. De Rousseau and Mr. De Rossi, you will now give your formal testimony for the court on the subject of the gentleman pictured in this photograph. Of course. He always whatever. Your 
Thousands and one thousand red-headed people assembled in the park on Lime Street that day. They don't recall the man in this photograph, eh, couple? No, I don't remember him. Obviously, he is dead now, but I assure you, he was not in the park. Alora, this victim has nothing to do with us. I have a lot to answer for, Pepino. It's your fault that we got caught in the first place. So... Hmm... They didn't free him. You've given sworn testimony that this man in the photograph was not present. Can you be certain? We, oui, we, oui, I'm quite certain. We not, we did not interview this man. Nobody looking like this came to the park. This I can promise. It must be noted that you have been arrested for a grand deception, however. Accordingly, this court has little confidence in your assurances. Luther, with this attitude, we get to nowhere, huh? Really a sulking now. This confidential document was obtained directly from Scotland Yard. It records an entry from the inspector's private diary dated the day before the incident. It reads, Lime Street, Red-Headed League, Undercover. Ah, I have the answer. Maybe there was another similar event in the park on the day in question, eh? That's it ridiculous. There's no question that Inspector Gregson was investigating the Red-Headed League. Which means it's quite possible that's when he was killed. But well, the defense may proceed with the cross-examination now. Ah, yes, my lord. Are these two important? Mm. Sorry, I'm just gonna see what statements I should press, cause... <laughs> oh my word! There's another part after this. But I want to press number three. Sorry, skipping ahead a little. <laughs> I don't want to like listen to these guys talk too much. Cause you're in too deep and you're trying to keep, but it's all in my head instead of going under. <laughs> it just keeps going. It never stops. <laughs> the party don't stop. But according to what you've said, you spoke with a thousand or more people that day. We, oui, that's true. My eyes are burning by the end of the day. Surely then you can't actually remember every single face. How are you so certain that this particular man wasn't present? Normally, the red hair is very distinctive, eh? But not when you have 1,000 redheads crowding around, then it's just an eyesore. But if there was some other information you could have gave us, then maybe we could have recall. That is not the line, Pepino. Remember, we do not remember it. We are sure of that fact, huh? If that was a man with a red hairpiece, but his moustache did not match the color, then I do not think I could have forgotten him. Asma said these two had only been shown that photograph, and they had been told nothing else at all. But what if I fed them just one other detail about the victim? For example... It is a game that never ends. It just goes on and on, my friends. Some people started singing it, not knowing what it was. Oh gosh, darn it! My instincts were wrong. I was gonna be like his fish and chips because he eats it all the time. It's his profession. I can certainly appreciate that just knowing the man had red hair wouldn't help you remember in this situation. But what if I, what if I told you that the man in the red hair piece was actually a detective? The man is a photograph. A detective? Yes. It would appear he found your notice in the paper suspicious and decided to investigate the incognito. Sorry, but this changes nothing. What if the red hair was blood? That's a lot of blood to like soak into all of the hair. Something to add, Mr. Darasi? Okay, see, I am always adding something. Parmesan, olive oil, pepper. What I mean is, did you not agree with your friend's last remark by any chance? Eh? What did he just say about the detective? Yes, that. Keep your mouth shut, Pepino. You have said enough already. Oh, he is hiding something. But why, Capo? What is the problem? There was a man who said, uh, I'm an inspector from Scotland Yard. What? Good lord. Order. Explain this full fast in your testimony, witness. It's simple. Oh, what? No, I have to see what... 
There is a man who was at the, the park who said to us he wasn't expect- There was no such man. Adai, what are you saying, Kapo? Have you forgotten I? I have forgotten nothing. Nobody likes this game to the park. Pasta, Kapo, pasta. You beat me at the many things, but not two. The memory and the meals. Like I said, when it is time to eat at the pasta, no one is a faster. You are inferior to me in every other way, so shut up. You're lying in court? Ugh! Rotar, the damage is done. Indeed it is, sir. Oui, there was a man who came to the park and he said he was an inspector from school and yard. However, he looked nothing like the man in the photograph. He was someone else. How can you be so sure? Because, to start with, the face is completely different. See, it's true, it's true. The man who came was a younger. His face was clean shaven. His eyes are all sadder. His chin was thinner. No resemblance whatsoever, then. Anyway, I was not going to be fooled. I took the obvious precaution and said to him, If you're really a detective, show us the proof. See, si, see, si, the capo here, he doesn't take a no nonsense, eh? But he was very prepared. He said he had identif identification. Identification? You mean official police inspector's identification? That is most unconvincing. Sorry, my lord. Counsel, no incognito inspector would offer his identification for inspection. It's quite out of the question. Definitely. Why would he expose his true identity? Really, the papers were fake. There's the couple. You are a genius. As I say in our Italia, it takes a thief to recognize another, eh? And what happened after he announced that he was a detective? He became very annoying. He said, you are under investigation. We took his papers from him and chased him out of the park. It was fantastical. And look, here is the identification. They stole it from this man. He had it coming. He made us very scared. But it was not who he said he was. Indeed, the person described does not appear to have behaved as a true inspector would. However, I believe it would be prudent for these identification papers to be entered into evidence. Hmm. But do you like them? Inspector's identification! Now let us return to witness testimony. Hells no! We're gonna inspect this identification and see who the heck it belongs to. Well, I suppose we should see what the inspector's identification looks like inside. Yes, it definitely looks fake, doesn't it? Out of interest, what name is given? Probably just something plucked out of the air. It's Tobias Gregson. Wait, what? This Scotland Yard insignia. It's genuine to me. But how? And the department and identification number details are all correct as well. Someone... Killed him for his papers, and they're using his actual papers. Since when have you known these? Do you mean to say... I know it seems incredible, but yes. I think this is a genuine identification book issued by Scotland Yard. But that's unbelievable. This is the real thing after all. Bam, 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 bam. Victim has nothing to do with us. We have a lot to answer for. <laughs> Whoa! Regal, thank you so much for the 28 month sub. Can't believe I've known you for over two years. I know, it's been over two years. That's crazy. Time flies so fast. What do you mean by that? Apollo, you promise not to say. Hey, couple? After we had taken all the money that day, we should have left the country. That was my plan. I left the purchasing of the tickets for the ferry to Dunkirk to my companion here. But he pulled them for the wrong day. Oops. See, but it is an easy mistake to, to make, huh? The fast, the dirty fast. Oof, I have no sympathy for you. We went all day late for the boat because of your stupidity. And it's only because of this... That the great so-called great redhead detective called us. Papo, you know what I think? It's the work of God. It is a holy punishment, eh? Pepino, 
was the last time. This is not only punishment, this is only your fault. Ah! Don't blame God for your unholy mistakes. You are making me sick with anger. Maybe I make a mistake. When devils eat that pasta, no one is a faster. I've seen the evidence. I feel like I just met you and you we were playing Fortnite with Drake. Ah, what? <laughs> Fortnite would make me dizzy and barf. They haven't told us much we didn't already know. What do you think, Mr. Nadhodo? Well, if it was the inspector's diary, it seems likely that he must have gone to Lime Street that day. And yet these two both claim they didn't see him. I have to say, they don't appear to be telling lies. Well, they are experts in deception, don't forget. Sounds implausible is their specialty. They may be lying simply to avoid being implicated in this case as well. Surely if they were truly experts in deception, they wouldn't have been caught. Well, yes, you do have a point there. It seems to me like we need more information. Fortnite VR? <laughs> Instant barf town. Okay, so I think I'm supposed to present Gregson's identification. Don't recall this man. This victim has nothing to do with us. Dave. Ah, oh, this is trial part two. Oh gosh. Present it. Yes, I'm right. I wonder if I could ask you to examine this identification book very closely. Miss Lestrade? Why Miss Lestrade? What is your intention here, Council? Is this really a fake or is it genuine? That's the question, which we can't answer ourselves. Don't be ridiculous. No Scotland Yard detective would allow his or her identification to be stolen. Hold it! That... that... that is the bosses! No question about it! And if I remember what you were playing two years ago? Tales of Vesperia? Tales of... Symphonia? Dragon Quest XI? <laughs> oh, whoops. As I suspected. Persona 5 Royal? The undercover detective who attended the Red-Headed League's enrollment on the day in question was the real Inspector Gregson carrying out an incognito investigation. I'm pretty sure two years ago you were still on Strikers. Probably, yeah. I'll finish it one day, I will. Older! But if the boss had his identification stolen, he would have reported it straight away. I mean, he was always on at me about it. If you lose Summit, report it at once, he'd say. Could it be then? But the inspector was physically unable to report it. Because he was dead! I think Tails? Huh? Basically, eh? What are you saying? Unable to? You're not suggesting. Yes, it's quite possible that he was killed before he had the chance to report his identification stolen. No. Okay, so... So... We are saying that he was killed, and then his identification was stolen. You were still on this game two years ago, that's what it feels like. Ah ha 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 ha. Yeah, it feels like that to me too. The defense posits that the victim was killed the day before his body was discovered at a different location. Do you two have anything to say about that? I know nothing. I've done nothing. Pull yourself together, Pepino. Oh you. You cannot behave like a little more like a master criminal than that, no? No, I wish I'd returned to Italia. Hey. Stop crying, Pepino, please. Otherwise, I. I. No, stop your whining and start talking. Well, I. I, I know nothing, eh? I don't know nothing, eh? But you will tell everything or face the worst possible outcome. Ugh. Ugh. You will dry your eyes and testify again about these identification papers and the precise circumstances under which you came by them. Hey. Crying out loud. Uh, virtual hugs make me dab. You. And thank you for the hugs. The, the truth is, we stuck in prison on Kevs and Forcing Night at our secret night out. Even though I didn't think he was a real detective, I, I was too scared to let me go that day just in case. 
We took the man's identification from it and shot the man in the room next to ours. There might have been a little tussle, but we did him no arm, and the next morning we let him go. Spent the night in a nice room. It was nothing like a prison, really. Bleh. You were on that one Tales game with the little girl and the giant dog. Vesperia. Because the little girl was Patty and the dog was... I totally forget the dog's name. Oh no, what's his name? <gasps> I feel so bad. This is outrageous. You imprisoned the man. But no, see, no. It, it was not like a prison. He was a very comfortable and a calm and a happy. Hi, couple. It, it was never part of my plan, I swear it. Okay. You think it was all on my fault, eh? It was because I got the date at the ferry wrong. I won a little today. I do not think it was your fault, Papino. I knew it. No, 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 no. But if I were a couple, it is not a fair. You'll have plenty of time for squabbling back at the prison, gentlemen. Oof. I don't believe this. How could he have been a real detective? Counsel for the defense. Proceed with the cross-examination. On the day before the incident, Gregson spent the night confined in this pair's hideout. Where was that hideout? Hideout... Too much. Where to go? Room next to ours. Let's just press the first statement, cause we're... Hideout. You realize what you're saying? You have to believe me. I never intended for that to happen. I'm sure you did not, did not intend it either. Do you think? But, but there was nothing else I could do. See, nothing else. This was not the first crime for the couple. He was at the window and the visa wits. I've told you before, Pepino. That is not the way to describe a criminal mastermind. What about this hideout of yours? An old empty house beyond the park on Lime Street. We rented the place for two days. It was an inspired idea by the couple here. An impulsive idea, I would say. No, no, no. Not impulsive. Inspired. Eh, couple? What am I supposed to say to that, huh, Pepino? And it was in this house described that you couldn't find Inspector Gregson, was it? <sighs> we. But you have to remember, I was under the impression that he was a pretender, not a real inspector. That doesn't quite add up, though. If you didn't think the man was a real inspector, there would have been no reason to take him prisoner, would there? No, you are right, but we couldn't be completely certain. Black Dog, I think his name was Rex. I don't think it was Rex. <laughs> Too scared, why? Because why has he come to the park? We didn't know. There was a chance that he had seen through my plan. And if that wasn't the case, he would go straight to the police station to blow us a whistle on us. Even if he was just a failing to be an inspector, he was not to no good, huh? Without a doubt, though. I think most people would agree that it's you two who are up to no good. Well, uh, see, you may be right. A eh, couple? The point is, we will not be able to escape from England immediately. That is why you had no choice but to take the man prisoner. What I don't understand is why the inspector felt the need to show you his identification in the first place. Me, I ask myself the same question. We're writing down the names and addresses of all the people who we took five shillings from that day. I've forgotten what name he said, but the address is told to me. See, see, address, Scotland Yard, almost like the vision he said. What? He probably didn't like your face, Pepino. Anyway, I was not rude, I just politely asked him why he had that said it. And that's when he started saying he was an inspector. Not long afterwards, he took out his identification. What was Inspector Gregson playing at? Tell the court what happened next. You took it back to your hideout, you say. See, we did, we did! Unless you got a better name than his name is Rex. No, I'm looking up his name now. Tales of Vesperia characters. His name is... His name is... Raven isn't in Tales of Vesperia? What? His name is... Rapide! It did start with an R, but it's repeat. Um, okay, um, what statement do I press? 
Okay, that's statement number four. Um, what do you mean by a little tussle exactly? Hmm? Oof, it was nothing. Just a minor incident. The fault of the inspector. He was a real piece of the work. A eh, couple. Yeah, you all want. Kotomaru, best dog. Just say. Kotomaru, the best. What happens? Oh, but Blanco's also really good too. But Rapide was also cool. You know what? Just all doggos are good characters. Oof, it was a disaster. He gave him a nice room and what does he do with them? In the middle of the night, he tries to escape through the ventil ventilator. You blame him? We chased him, bien sûr, and we caught him again. Can you blame us? Wait, you didn't... Shoot the man in your haste, did you? Is, what do you think we are? Of course not! I simply caught him up. Caught hold of him again and, and took him back to the room. Uh oh. Mr. Durasi, is something wrong? Eh? Me? Something Mr. De Rousseau just said seemed to make you, um. Well, it seemed to make you act even more strangely than usual. What was all that about? Cavallo, at times like that, you don't want to have the capo after you, believe me. And I speak from a personal experience. Personal experience? That's it enough, Pepino. There's no need to say more. Truth is, the night that before we put the Red Hat League plan into action, I was scared. It was not a fair to the couple, but I tried to run away. It's a shame you didn't manage it. The couple here, he came after me like the turbina. He dragged me back to the house, kicking at us, screaming. I still have the bruises to prove it, eh, couple? Bruises, you say? <gasps> Guilty killed Gregson! He has the same mark! Oh my gosh! You wanna see ya? Huh? You wanna see ya, uh, my fantastical bruises? That's enough now, Pepino. No, that's why they didn't recognize Gregson's photo. Because it wasn't Gregson at all. It was guilty. No one wants to look at any parts of you. What to do, huh? I want to show you or uh, I don't. I show you or I don't. You do. Now. Hello. If everyone wants to see, then I do it. Echo, you see? This is still very abysmal, eh? That, that red ring around your neck. You got that when you were dragged back to the house? Me, hey, the couple. Sometimes he's a very... I said that's enough. Pepino's neck is nothing to do with what we are talking about here. You have my word. Hmm, yes. What is your opinion, counsel? It's super important! About this regular about reason, it's super important! Why don't these people understand? You have 100% of your court cases. I know, I'm a genius, but they still don't believe me. Mr. DeRossi, I'm going to have to ask you. To amend your testimony with details about that mark on your neck. Hey, couple, you see? Everyone is interested in what I say, huh? <sighs> Very well, you will amend your testimony as requested, Mr. DeRossi. See, si, see, si, if you really want to know. Okay, um... Uh, okay. He tried to escape, but the couple put the colore on him and dragged him back, like what he did to me, I see? And then... He did- they didn't meet Gregson, they- they really don't recognize him. So the day before his body was discovered, Inspector Gregson was taken prisoner while working incognito. No, no, it was not like that. It was only a prison. It was an invitation to stay. It was only... However you describe it, there's one glaring inconsistency that remains. What inconsistency consistency is this, counsel? I would ask the court to look closely at this photograph of the victim, Inspector Gregson. He doesn't have red on his neck. You will see that there is no red ring visible around his neck. Eh? But, but that makes no sense. It was me who took the uh, colore of the man in the morning. I saw the red bruises on his neck, just like I have. Even that the mark is still clearly visible on this witness's neck. We'd expect to see bruising on the victim who was put in the collar more recently than Mr. De Rossi. Indeed. It's most peculiar. If you're defending someone, they are automatically innocent. Now, um, our second client 
no, our first client, Magnus McGilded, he was uh, guilty. But he died straight after the trial ended. But what will we uh, tell you, huh? huh? We say this one at the beginning, many times! <laughs> We, the pin was right. The man is the photograph. He has someone's difference with the man we got cut up that night. Walter! It would appear then that on the day before the incident, the man who visited the park on Lime Street posing as an incognito inspector was not Inspector Gregson at all. If that's true, however, how do you explain the inspector's identification? This is a genuine you just get what are you doing this is a genuine identification book issued by scotland yard it's inconceivable that someone could have stolen such an important item from the inspector unless they killed him prosecution had made that assertion itself and we also know that the inspector had made a note about the red-headed league in his diary for that day which surely means we can't divorce the two events completely the inconsistency noted by the defense is most troubling if it were the real Inspector Gregson whom these two red-headed red gentlemen encountered, the fact that no bruising can be seen around his neck defies explanation. But equally, if they actually encountered an imposter, how did that person come to be in possession of the real Inspector's identification? Freaking killed him! Does the defense have some plausible explanation, Counsel? The whole thing defies explanation. No, it doesn't! <laughs> this is confusing. What? It's precisely for these occasions that we keep meticulous notes in the court record, Mr. Nadohoro. Because those are the facts, and the facts cannot lie. No, the facts can't lie. Even when they point to something so incredible, it's almost unbelievable. Well, my lord, the true identity of the person who turned up in the park for the Red-Headed League's enrollment is revealed by the information in the court record, I believe. Some people. Are you guys some people? Pepino's 25. Third son of Green Italia. Uh, Fabian. Okay, so they are here. Venus. Good gracious. Very tantalizing, Mr. Nadohodo. But why don't you help us all to see whatever truth it is that you have apparently seen? Who exactly was this inspector that appeared before Mr. Rousseau and Mr. De Rossi? An imposter! Though it seems incredible, I admit, the undeniable facts point to only one thing. Since no bruising can be seen on the victim's neck, the person who these re two red-headed men took prisoner that day cannot have been Inspector Gregson. In other words, your whole argument up to now has been a waste of time. On the contrary, I haven't finished. What? There's no bruising on the victim's neck, so the question of, uh, immediately posed next is, who exactly was this man in a park on Lime Street found to be carrying Inspector Gregson's identification? See, see, that's right. We tell the same story every time. Whoever this man was, the couple dragged him from a pillar to a post with a dog collar. Eh? Oh, dear Pepino, I was not so harsh as, we, as you say, huh? Well, who was that false old inspector? Eh? Who was he? Clearly, defense has an I he's not English. Has an idea about that. About the true identity of the man these two imprisoned that night. I must ask the counsel for the defense to elaborate post haste. Who did the witnesses account in the park posing as a little garrison? Who is me? Isn't... isn't that... One of the witnesses who was in the stand this very courtroom earlier today. A nameless man whose only occupation appears to be peddling here, say, to passersby. What on earth would a street seller be doing with a police inspector's identification papers? Witnesses, is this the man or not? What has happened to his lip? Ah. See, this man is not for the Red Headed League, eh? He's looking for the Twisted Lip League, no? Perhaps rather than making such a rash claim next time, you should bite your lip instead. It seems improbable, yes, but one undeniable fact remains. During his testimony earlier, I noted something around the man's neck. A red ring of bruising. Eh? Defense demands that Mr. Gossip be brought back to the stand. Older! Bailiff, bring the aforementioned witness back into the courtroom. You should just bite your lip instead. Sounds painful. Yeah, it does. Immediately! Did he. 
purposely hurt his lip to like not give away who he is. Well, I never. An undeniable ring of bruising indeed. And identical to that of the witness beside her. Now what's going on here, eh? Oh, is that this, mate? It's a birthmark, isn't it? A birthmark, you say? I assume the reason you've been recalled to the stand has been explained to you. I am somewhat about an inspector again. I'm telling you, you've got it all wrong as usual. You're denying all knowledge of it? Well, of course I am. Are you trying to kill me with all this nonsense, eh? Well, at least you'll have more swords to pedal back on Fresno Street, won't you? Now, we're going to need you to testify again. And you, Mr. DeRosa and Mr. DeRossi, I'm sure you'll cooperate, won't you? Yvonne, any choice? We are in bigger trouble, eh, couple? That's quite enough d dilatory chatter. Proceed with the testimony. I just want to see who killed him! The man who claims to be an inspector that day was definitely not this man. It wasn't this guy? Is right, see? You think we ought to forget these grand lips, huh? I never leave Fresno Street, alright? I have no interest in any red ended league. I'm all alone in the world, me. I've got no kinfolk nor nothing. Why would I be involved in something like that? Just look at me, eh? Does it look like I could carry off a disguise with a face like this? It certainly appear that we have the wrong man. What have I been telling you, huh? There is no need for this pointless testimony. Uh. That's right. I'm just a simple peddler, remember? Russell Street's all I know. How do you come by a police inspector's identification book, eh? Well, yes, that's hard to explain, but... Hmm. A brief cross-examination, I think, counsel. Very brief. Uh, isn't there anyone in this courtroom who thinks I might be onto something? I stand steadfastly at your side as always, Mr. Nadahodo. I think they're lying. I think they're all lying. Mm. So, you'd heard of the Red Headed League, had you? You don't get a name like Gossip for nothing, eh? It's my business to know what's going off in town. I stole that nasty tidbit uh, to a fair few redheads that came past me. Us, I haven't got sandwich to cope off for it. Well, he does have a very red nose if that counts. Who knows? But as you can see, my own has not got a hint of red in it. And in any case, Fresno Street's my patch. You will catch me sliding off to some other part of town, sir. Not likely. Mr. DeRusso. Ah, we? Oui? Can I help you? Did Mr. Cossip's word just now lead you to remember something relevant, perhaps? It was the other day when I was looking for a place near the park, a small house or something. To the headquarters of to be the headquarters of your red-headed league, yes. I visited an housing agent on Lime Street and there saw him. This man was paying money to the agent. What? Mr. Gossip with a housing agent? He, he has some kind of contract in his hand and they were clearly discussing terms. What? No, no, no. You're mistaken, chum. I've never left Fresno Street at me, like I said before. You've mistaken me for someone else, someone with the same face. No, no, the couple was right. I remember the two. It was a paying demand with the banknotes. Boots. Like I said, that was... that wasn't me. I was curious why this man with the dirty clothes had so much money. We looked at the name on the papers. And what name was written? Mr. Gossip? You know, this man, he lies. He tells you he has a no name. But the fact his name is Hugh Boone, huh? It's better than Mr. Cossip, I think, see? No. Wait, so are you the missing husband then? I'm a peddler of tidbits of information, like I said, on Fresno Street, and that's that. Wait. Hey. 
Daily Vigil. 40. Their hairstyle is similar. And there was a picture of Evie on the desk. We can't see the shape of his eyebrows. I mean, the face does look very different. Hmm? I don't much like folk talking about my personal life. Hmm, indeed. It's not the intention of the court to invade the privacy of, privacy of witnesses. Very well, I shall respect your wishes, sir. The aforementioned name shall be redacted from all court records of the trial. Assuming no object- No! I'm sorry, my lord, but the defense does object because the room where Gregson was found dead was... Q Boone's room. Because the name just mentioned has a very deep significance to this case. Gracious. You similarly object, Professor o Prosecutor Asagui. As it happens, my lord, that particular name has already been mentioned during today's proceedings. Well, I never. What capacity? Yu Boon. The name of the leaseholder of the room. Let me put this very simply. The victim's body was discovered in your rented room. I suggest, sir, that you start talking. Well, alright. Suppose that might be the case, eh? So your real name is Hugh Boone? Well, just between us, I don't like to blow me own trumpet, but there's no finer peddler of tidbits in town. So, hey, I happen to be able to afford a grubby little room of fall falling down Backstreet Townhouse. Do? And once every six months, I go and pay the rent to the agent on Lime Street. Ah, yeah, I remember now. There were two vulgar redheads in there last time. Eh? If either one of us is a vulgar, it's not a me. Sink again, Pepino. Why didn't you bring this up before? It's like I told you already. I don't like talking about my personal life. I'm a tidbit peddler as far as everyone else is concerned. No fuss. You... You will update your testimony to include this most surprising revelation, Mr. Boone. If I must. But the leaseholder Scotland Yard has been looking for since the body was discovered. Has been here under our noses all along. Went to the room. What oh, difference it makes. So, you live in that room presumably, do you? No, I don't live there. What do you think? There's no bed, is there? Just a desk. Then, why would you want to rent it? Well, I... I don't think I should have to say, really. Then how about the notice board in there? Which is covered from top to bottom in confidential documents only the police should have access to. Ah. No, that board's not mine. The inspector must have brought it along. Only the other bits and bobs that belong to me. The desk and the chair and that. Um, people don't generally carry enormous notice boards around with them. Real question is, what why Inspector Gregson killed why was Inspector Gregson killed there in your room? Well obviously I've not the faintest idea. I mean it's causing me no end of bother, to be honest. It seems to be about Mr. Gossip sorry, Mr. Boone. But rather as little is known about his room as possible for some reason. Cause he's guilty? Yes, it does come across that way, and more importantly, knowing that the scene of the crime is actually his room completely changes things. In particular, there's one part of his testimony that's really bothering me now. That's how I'm going to finally undo this man. Quick? Mm. I'm all alone in the world. I've no kinfolk or nothing. Why would I be involved in something like that? Posh tech. Thank you, Smooth. Ugh. Okay, yeah, I thought so. I present... Because if the desk and the chair belong to you, then what was on the desk belongs to you, too. If you have no kinfolk, as you put it... And explain why is it that among this spa the sparse furnishings, we found this photograph in the room. Ah. I presume, as you've been renting the room, that this photograph belongs to you, does it not? Oh, um, well... Mr. Bood, drop the pretense and tell the court exactly who you really are. I don't know what you mean. I'm a peddler. I keep telling you so. You really don't need to bother with me. Please, just, just leave it alone. As the man says... Leave it alone. Whatever the truth is about this man's life, it has no bearing on this case. 
because it's simply not possible that he impersonated Inspector Gregson. How can you be so sure? Just look at the man. No man to disguise could ever hide those unmissable features. What if everything he's wearing, like this face right now, is just a mask? But what if we were to look at the other way around? What do you mean? Yes, Council, what do you mean? Well, there's no denying that Mr. Boone's lip is very prominent indeed. But consider the possibility that his prominent lip itself a part of an elaborate disguise. Then hiding that prominent feature, in other words, revealing his true face, would make an utterly impenetrable disguise. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Hugh Boone? Yeah. Good witness! Are you still- what? What do you say? Are you still hiding the truth from this course? If that's a disguise, then... Underneath it, his true identity must be... Yes, that's right. There's really only one person he could really be. My lord, the defense believes it can reveal Mr. Boone's true identity to court. No. Please, no. Pretty well then, counsel. What is the true identity of this peddler? You! Your real name is actually Mr. Vigil, isn't it? Mr. Daily Vigil. I don't recall that name, the counsel. Who is this Mr. Vigil? It's a name I encountered yesterday, my lord. It has to do with a certain client of Mr. Herlock Sholmes. A young gentlewoman came to the detective asking him to locate her missing husband. The woman in this photograph, in fact. This is Mrs. Vigil. What? From what I understand, you haven't returned home since the night before the inspector was found dead. Um. But of course, on that night, you were being held captive by the two red-headed League men. And last night, you were put up by the prosecution service in preparation for testifying in the trial. Because we've been led to believe that you, Miss Venus, and Mr. Sandwich were all homeless. Being important witnesses in this case, we needed to know where we could find you, of course. And that explains why you've not only been able to return home, but also unable to contact your wife. Who's been beside with herself with worry, waiting for you at the vigil residence. Now you just told on a minute. I don't have the first idea what I'm talking about, really. It's a simple enough matter to confirm my suspicions. All we have to do is pull out that disguise. No, please. Bailiff, bring soap, a sponge, and a wash bowl at once. Mr. DeRusso and Mr. DeRossi, you will restrain the witness. Oui, my lord. Oui, my lord. Ooh, ah. No, stop. Get off, please. Don't. Innocent people have nothing to hide. Do It is you. I mean, the photograph on the desk was pretty like, hey, this is him. But I had no idea who Hugh Boone was, but now we know. Well, we are now seeing your true features, I presume. Lift your head, sir, so the court can see your face. It would appear that the defense counsel's assertion was entirely correct. This has all been a very elaborate deception. So, witnesses, tell the court. Have you seen this man before? I don't believe it, but... See, si, there is a no question. This is the inspector we saw in the park. Extraordinary. On the day of the red-headed league enrollment, the man claiming to be Inspector Gregson, who appeared before Mr. DeRusso and Mr. DeRossi in the park. Was you, disguised as the Inspector, or rather, was you posing as the Inspector in no disguise at all? Mr. Visual was formerly employed as the Chief Warder at Barclay Prison. The Chief Warder? Then your career had promise. Why, you would quite possibly have become the future Governor of the prison. What on earth have you been doing peddling tittle-tattle on Fresno Street? Well... It's been ten years since Mr. Vigil worked at the prison. Ten years? 
I'm... I'm really dreadfully sorry about all this. Yes, it's true. I am Daily Vigil. You were the chief warder at Barclay Prison ten years ago? So, where did Mr. Hugh Boone come from? Boone is... the other me. It's a name I invented. Well, evidently, there is a great deal under the surface here. I'll explain everything. I'll tell you just how wretched my life has become. So, did you kill Gregson? As you say, it was ten years ago now that my employment at Barclay's chief warder came to an end. Having left the prison service, I searched for some new occupation by which to earn a wage. The times were hard in London, and I found no suitable engagements at all. In desperation one day, I turned my hand at selling wares on Fresno Street. But your wife appears to know nothing of this. She still maintains that you are the chief warder at Barclay Prison. I was utterly determined that my wife should not know of my failings, which is why I've never told her. I opened an account at a bank under the name of Hugh Boone, and I rented the cheapest room I could find on Fresno Street. A scene at the very crime we're investigating. Yes, that's right. A place from which I can emerge every morning at 8 as a squalid peddler. And transform myself back every evening at 5 into a well-dressed man about the town before returning home. That quickly became my daily routine. I was puzzled by the lack of furniture in the room. But that explains it. But why on earth didn't you just tell us this in the first place? I have a wife, sir, and two sons. Without wishing to sound self-conceited, they regard me with some pride. I couldn't bring myself to disappoint them. So instead you decided to conceal your occupation from them? Yes. I've made such a terrible mess of everything. Still, one thing doesn't add up. No matter how many tidbits of information you could sell to passing gentlemen, even at six pence apiece, you couldn't hope to match the salary you must have commanded as chief warder at the prison. Very true. You've kept your family in comfort despite ten years of somewhat misbegotten employment. That was all thanks to Inspector Gregson. What? Inspector Gregson? What on earth? It was some years after I've invented Boone and begun my other life as a street seller. He, the inspector that is, recognized me one day. Do you mean to say the victim of an was an acquaintance of yours? So, Vigil didn't kill him? I knew him from my time working at the prison. When he saw what I'd become, he was deeply troubled for me and my family. And from that day forward, he visited me on Fresno Street with increasing regularity. Then one day, he asked me if I would carry out a secret assignment for him. Secret? What was it? I was to... Impersonate the inspector. What? Impersonate him? We always met in that little room so the inspector could brief me. Bishop, work sees tomorrow and take a statement from the proprietress. There was always something along those lines. Surveillance work, interviewing people. On those occasions. He would lend me his identification so people would believe who I was. My instructions were to make an impression, to let people know that Inspector Gregson had been at work. And for those services, he compensated me financially. The Scotland Yard Inspector willingly relinquished his identification into your care with the intent to deceive. That, as I'm sure I need not point out, is a very serious criminal offence. But why? What was the point of, uh... I truthfully do not know. All I can say is that the Inspector warned me on numerous occasions. Now remember, Visual, I need your solemn word. You don't blab about this to anyone, alright, ever. Even if... well, even if I owned up a crooker. What were you hiding? In time, he started to bring papers with him to the room as well. It became something of a second office for him. Gregson was also investigating the professor case.
because he was close with the Van Zeeks and Clint was killed by the professor. Yeah, Clint was killed by the professor, so maybe Gregson wanted to get to the root of the problem. Wait, but Gregson found... Gregson was the... Didn't they say Gregson was the one who discovered who the professor was? Yeah, because they came upon the... Am I mixing things up? Am I making... Am I saying things that... Or whatever. So, in fact, the person who declared himself to be Inspector Gregson at the park on Lime Street was really... Yes, it was me. Acting on the inspector's orders. As usual, I removed my boon disguise. Went and instructed to the park, armed with the inspector's identification book. It never occurred to me that the bruise on my neck might give me away. Yeah, they did say Gregson was part of the Professor Case because they're like, that's what shot him up into um, popularity. And that's why he got more, like, cases from Scotland Yard, hmm? Well, it would seem this confession completely destroys the defense's case. Explain yourself, Prosecutor Asogi. My learned friend's assertion was as follows. The victim was killed at another location on the day before his corpse was discovered. At the hands of those these two red-headed league men where they imprisoned the inspector. But no, that can't be. After all, it wasn't the inspector who went to the park that day, it was me. So Gregson was killed in Hugh Boone's room. But Daily Vigil was not there. So Daily Vigil also ran into the room and saw that Gregson was dead, and that's why he ran out. Because he was like, oh shoot, Gregson's dead. Goodness. Finally, we have clarity. We had nothing to do with the murder of the inspector. And merci, Monsieur de la Fence, for proving it. Ah. Uh. Order. Indeed, it would appear that we have reached a de facto conclusion of sorts. These witnesses had no involvement in the murder of the victim. As proven somewhat ironically by the defense. Uh. I hereby call an end to the cross-examination. So... Asuma? Pardon me, my lord, but with your permission, I would like to pose one further question to the witness. Zuma? What question, counsel? It concerns the events of ten years ago. I believe you would have been a present at a very- uh, I believe you would have been present at a very significant execution that was carried out at the time. Ten years ago? The execution of the professor, Genshin Asogi. I want to know exactly what your involvement was. Oh, answer me, man. One moment, counsel. Is this related to the current case? Yes, because... Naturally. Because they had the whole signboard up. It's the prosecutor's belief that this case and the events of ten years ago are inextricably, inextricably linked. Hmm. Does the defense concur, counsel? Kazuma, you're not yourself. You're not as calm and collected as usual. Poor Kazuma-sama, no wonder he's acted this way. Mr. Vigil's memories of what happened ten years ago will tell us the tale of Genshin Asuki's last moments, his own father. I know, I do understand that, but even so... How's it? Professor- Prosecutor Asugi. Do you genuinely believe that this question requires an answer in order to learn the truth behind Inspector Gregson's death? I need you to trust me. Please. I trust you. No worries. Very well. And the defense has no objection. I see. In that case, you will answer the question, witness. The, the truth is, I remember very little of that time. You've forgotten? So to say, yes. As I said, I resigned from my role at the prison ten years ago. 
But for some peculiar reason, the memory of the events leading up to that moment is extremely hazy. Were you drugged? Does that not strike you as strange, Mr. Naruhodo? Sorry? Well, ten years is a long time. But to have forgotten the reason why he left such an important job? Yes, you're right. And not only that, Mr. Vigil's claim contradicts what we already know. The human spirit is a fragile thing, broken all too easily. Which is why we have a tendency to wrap it up for protection. Sorry? The human spirit? I'm afraid I don't understand what you mean. When we experience pain and suffering that we feel unable to bear, we block it out, obliterate it from our memories, seal it away. But it never truly leaves us. If the seal is broken, the memories resurface. And when they do, that fragile spirit may finally be crushed. But, but I really don't... Kasuma-sama. But if it must be crushed, then so be it. Because the truth will not stay buried. It's coming out, one way or another. That's what she said. I feel like I'm slink slouching. Right, now I understand. It's clear what his intentions are. He means to expose the truth at any cost. Perhaps if I pointed out the contradiction in what Mr. Vigil claimed earlier, it might cause some crucial memories to return to him. But should I? Should I present the evidence or not? Uh, do it! <laughs> I have no idea how this is going to go. But this is a court of law, and I have a duty to pursue the truth. Mr. Vigil, I'd like you to look at this. Evidence that clearly contradicts your version of the events. Um... Uh, this. Right? Yeah, he's got some of this. He's like, I don't remember why! You, you remember. Just a few moments ago, you made the following statements. I resigned from my role as a prison at the prison ten years ago. Ah, oh, well, yes. In other words, you claim to have left the post of chief order of your own volition. Well, yes, of course. Why? Tell me. Do you remember seeing this document before? No, no, I don't. This is the this is a dismissal notice ordering the immediate termination of a prison staff member's employment. A dismissal notice. And the name on the notice is yours, Mr. Vigil. What? What? It's... it's... mine? So you didn't resign from the prison service at all. For some reason, you were dismissed as chief warder from Barclay. No, there's... it's been a mistake. I'm sure... Sure I tendered my resignation. This dismissal notice is nonsense. Isn't... It? If you were forcibly dismissed, there must have been good reason. Clearly, you did something. Mr. Vigil, it's time to break the seal and have you remember. Is he gonna turn into like a crazy dude? According to the few remaining records, the final ex execution that you supervised was on 17th June 10 years ago. And on that day, something very serious took place at Barkley Prison. The 17th of June. Was... was that... Professor's execution? That's a... As you were the chief warder at the time, it stands to reason. That you would have been present throughout the proceedings. It... does sound familiar. And yet, that execution never took place. Oh yeah, because he rose from the, the convict, ostensibly executed that earlier that day, later re-emerged from his grave. Convict, back to life. In the cemetery in the middle of the night, there was a witness. However, the witness claims that a moment after he saw the convict clambering out of his grave, A gunshot rang out from over his shoulder, and the bullet pierced the professor's chest, killing him instantly. Those may have been the professor's actual last moments. Yes. Yes. Seeing as you were in charge of overseeing executions at the time, you must know the truth about what really happened. It's in your head, somewhere deep down. 
Well, Chief Warder Daily Vigil? I know there are memories in your head that can explain what happened on 17th June 10 years ago. And now it's time for you to drag them up. Uh, uh, Mr. Vigil? Yes. Full prison. Great chaos. The prisoner escaped. He was killed. In the cemetery. Shocking news ripped through Barclay like a hurricane. What? Order, order, order! Do you mean to say, Mr. Vigil, that your memories at the time have returned? I heard it's... It's like some floodgates have been opened. The images, the screams. Oh my goodness. The papers. There were reports, articles, about a man who'd seen a ghost. Yes, Enoch Drubber. But, but surely those reports were exaggerated. There were traces at the scene. Traces of what? In Lowgate Cemetery, at plot number 139. Blood. Lots of blood. That's where the man was buried, of course. Obviously, something terrible had happened there. The depths of conspiracy and depravity from which this tale is emerging are quite staggering. I've reviewed the police records from that time extensively. A thorough investigation was conducted by Scotland Yard to ascertain how the convict managed to escape in the first place. And the conclusion reached by the investigation team was... That a member of the prison staff must have been involved. Are you suggesting that a prison warder abetted the man's bid for freedom? Yes. Yes, and I... I was suspected of doing it. Of using that mass murderous execution as a way to help him escape. So, Daily Vigil was also a scapegoat. Someone framed him for for letting the professor for make. Okay, supposedly the professor died in an execution, but he popped out of his grave, and Enoch Drubber saw him. So he was alive. That's why Madame Tuspel and Madame Tuspel was watching all this too. And then a gunshot rang out and killed him, and there was a lot of blood at the graveyard. So that's when he really died, and then Madame Tuspels waited until he was really dead to get his likeness for her wax thing. So that means the execution didn't go well. They framed Daily Vigil for it, and they're like, you're gone. But then... It's not the- it's not Barricade Inn who- Is Barricade Inn part of it too? Just like Courtney Scythe was? Like, Courtney Scythe was blackmailed into doing autopsies for someone. I'm presuming Strongheart because she was with him. So, what is Strong- What is Strongheart planning? Because maybe he- Strongheart's also blackmailing Barricade Inn. To be like, yo, run things like this in your prison. I don't see how it all connects. What? And Inspector Gregson, yeah, this is... This is when he shot to fame. This is when he became a policeman of good reputation. So why would he have all those files of the professor case on that notice board... But also, why would he be investigating the Red-Headed League? What do they have to do with anything? What? He did what? I remember now. The horde of all was coming back to me. One evening, a few days after the execution, some detectives came to the prison. I was called to the governor's office at the top of the watchtower. I'm sorry, Daily, this serious business, but I can't help you now. As Chief Order, you were responsible for overseeing the execution of all, eh? 
Well, it seems the first has gotten your wants to have a few wee words with you, booty. You had to pack your things, laddie. You're the intended person. As soon as he told me that, my mind just went completely blank. And the next thing I knew, I... The professor. The most hated killer in our country's history. And I let him escape. I'm finished. My life... is over. Did you jump out the window? Order! Bailiff, fetch a doctor at once! Court is adjourned for today with immediate effect. So with Mr. Vigil's collapse, proceedings came to an abrupt end for the day. Once again overshadowed by the legacy of that notorious killer. Appearing like a cursed ghost ship on a fucked ocean. Lord Van Zeeks, Mr. Vigil, Kazuma, Gregson. All of them bound by invisible chains anchored to the same wreckage in the murky depths of the past. What did Redheaded do? was hired to kidnap the detective. But they let him go the next day. I don't think... Could it have been? With the miraculous light that had been trying to cut through the gloom and shine on those tragic events. It's playing on the edges of the truth at last. To be continued? There's still more to this? Case, I mean? I mean, there's- I know there's a- I know there's another trial, but... Investigation part two? If there's an investigation part two, that means there's a trial part two. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Or the detective wasn't the target and the detective knew. It just keeps going and going and going. Oh my god. Oh. My brain hurts. You know, my brain hurt yesterday from watching the end of Umbrella Academy Season 3. Like, that hurt my brain. And this is hurting my brain too. There's... Oh, there just keeps... There's just so many people that's involved in this. Like, they keep adding more more pieces of the puzzle, and it's just making it more confusing. I'm so tired. What is- Man, man. I really feel like Strongheart is at the end of everything. Like, he clearly gives you Ace Attorney and game bad guy vibes. Like, he's like, what's his face from Apollo Justice? The the guy with the white hair and the orange suit who was like, ha ha, forensics girl and her older sister, I've got a hold on you. Like, he's like that dude. And he's also like Von Karma, where he's like, oh, I have a, I have a untarnished reputation, but whoops, I killed a man. So Strongheart is somehow involved in all of this. But how? That is what we're missing. And why was Kazuma's dad killed? Because I don't believe that Kazuma's dad was the professor. I think he was falsely killed. Because he was a visiting student from Japan and they weren't there for that long. Well, I don't know how long the professor killings had been going on before um, they got there, but... What reason would they have to to frame Kazuma's dad? Unless because the last person that the professor killed was Barrick's older brother Clint. Unless somehow Kazuma's dad accidentally 
killed Barrack's older brother, and they're like, well, then you must be the professor killing all these dudes because we caught you killing this one dude. But... I... Man, there's... Gant. <laughs> Wait, was that his name? Because right now I'm just thinking of um, Legend of Zelda. Um, Apollo Justice characters. Clavier, Clavier. Who the heck are all of you? No, I just want car- uh, whatever. <sighs> You're overthinking so much, I feel like the inside of your brain is just one super long complicated math equation. Yeah, I'm that confused lady with all the math equations flying at her head. Yeah, I think I'm overthinking it. I think I just need to continue playing this game and stop with my hypothesis and just... and just play the game and finish it. Um, so... Yeah, I'll definitely stream again, um... this again sometime this week. Maybe I'll even do it tomorrow. Who knows? But for now, I need a break. I need to shut my brain off. Take a, take a step back. Ooh, I need some water. So, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Stay toasty. Have a good night. Next time, can we go raid Slushy? Sure. Um, if my mouse will work. Raid channel. Slushy is playing Persona 5 Strikers. She looks to be caught up to where I am. Okay. I'll see y'all next time. It's gotta end recording. Peace!